Stream. Happy that you're glad to have you. We're just gonna get right into it. Uh, oh, what's up? What's a what's a what's a what's up? Be connect. How we doing? Good morning, folks. Good morning, stained. I see you down there. Welcome, welcome. Gonna pull up my creator dashboard real quick. Folks, I am exhausted. Do you ever have one of those nights that you just can't go to sleep? I hate them. I hate them, but that's what I had last night. I could not get to sleep for the life of me. I kept trying and trying, tossing and turning. And then the next thing I knew, it was five o'clock and I was awake. I think I got three or four hours. So I'm exhausted. And I don't like being exhausted, but here we are. Here we are. Let's see. I gotta go drop over in general. Let them know we are live. Drop a gift. Well, folks, the plan for today, the plan for today is we are going to uh, do a backlogged list. We're going to make the, the top 10 games of the decade of the 2000s. And then uh, we might try to make my goatee list, but we might also not. We'll just see. We shall see. Then we're going to, um, then we're probably going to play some games for impact from the Game Awards. Uh, we have all three of them that I haven't played. And so the game plan is is to play them on stream over the next couple weeks before the Game Awards happen. Um, there's Hindsight, Endlings, and uh, I was a teenage exocolonist. So I think what we'll probably do, we'll just put a one, two, three to them. And we'll play whichever one our in Jesus decides. And that'll be that. That'll be that. But I am, I'm real tired. This music isn't doing it for me either. Isn't doing it. Let's try hi-fi. Maybe hi-fi will be what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Let me make sure this gift is appropriate to the very end. You guys, gifts make me gifts make me so nervous. 
Working on the sermon while I listen, preaching on the song of Zechariah, and for real, I just imagine him holding baby John the Baptist and singing this song of thanksgiving, expectation, and anticipation. It reminds me of doing something similar with my oldest child who we tried seven years for. Like, this sermon is literally half done with that story. Oh, that's awesome. Welcome, welcome, Oriole Jedi. I'm amazed you haven't followed. I feel like I've seen you around enough. But, well, we're glad that you joined the Discord. Glad to have you here on the on the Twitch channel. Noctowl. I wonder if it chose Noctowl as your RNG because of uh, because of the Oriole thing. Hmm. Although an Oriole is definitely not an owl, but it is a bird. So there's something to it. It would be more appropriate if it chose Oricorio. Oricorio is the Oriole Pokemon, so make much more sense. But good morning. We're glad that you're here. I'm enjoying some Irish breakfast tea this morning. I've already had my cups of coffee, and I simply can't do it anymore. So now I'm going to be downing tea until I wake up, and we'll see. We'll just see. We'll see if and when I wake up all the way. It may just be one of those days. Do you guys ever just have sleepy days? You ever have days where you're just like, this is, this is just my day where I'm tired until I go to sleep. I think that, I think this might be one of those. One of those where you like wake up and then it's just like a haze until you go to night, go, go to night night. That was what I was about to say. Until you go night night. That's where I think I am. There's actually, yeah, I've had those days before, for sure. There's actually a voice mod um, for sleepy voice, and I want to see, let's see how it sounds. This is, this is the sleepy voice. Can you tell that I'm sleepy? Does this make me sound more or less tired than I already did? I think it like drags out my vowels. Makes me sound a little bit like Otis from the Andy Griffith Show. Slurs my speech a little bit. You guys don't even, you don't even know about the jury. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow is the day the new Pokemon drops. I'll be playing it as soon as it comes out. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so incredibly excited. It's going to be so much fun. I've already heard some reviews. There was, so there was a review that went out uh, from Games Radar, which another reviewing service. Uh, but they said that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are the lowest reviewed games since Pokemon Emerald. And as soon as I read that, I was like, Pokemon Emerald was poorly reviewed? That's my favorite one. <laughs> like, what do you mean? What do you mean the Pokemon Emerald is lowly reviewed? That goes to show that the Pokemon games are just tops because if that's the worst game they can come up with, <laughs> good luck. I have Scarlet digitally pre-ordered and downloaded on the Switch, ready to go. That's it. Yep, where I'm doing Scarlet on my own playthrough and Violet here on Checkpoint, so I'm excited. Very excited. I have every intention of doing the digital unless I go to the Walmart first thing in the morning and they have them out. But normally my Walmart is crazy slow about putting out games. And I live too far from a GameStop or a Target. Plus, I imagine you probably have to have them pre-ordered there. Um, so, probably going to go digital. But that does make me sad. I so much prefer the physical games. Whenever it comes to Pokemon. But what I might do is maybe I'll just... Maybe I'll just play the Violet one. And then I'll buy the Scarlet one. I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure it out. It all depends on what Walmart decides to do. And as we've learned from our experience with, with Walmart here on the Checkpoint stream. It's unpredictable. But I'm super excited for it. I have managed to somehow avoid all the spoilers. I have not seen a single Pokemon TikTok. I have not seen a spoilered image on Twitter. I have avoided social media entirely for two weeks. And uh, doggone it. I'm not going to get anything spoiled for me. I've already had enough spoiled for me. And I'm telling you, so I, I got a call yesterday, literally from out of sense, who was like, how are you enjoying Pokemon? I was like, what are you, what are you talking about, man? I was like, it doesn't come out until Friday. He was like, oh, he was like, well, I've, I've seen, I've seen gameplay. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you have seen gameplay because this game has been leaked like nobody's business. I have never seen a game leak like this, uh, especially not a Pokemon game. But it feels like everyone has already played Pokemon. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why? 
Why do you, why are you, why are you, uh, you know, pirating it two weeks early? Just wait, just wait until Friday. Good morning, big doggo. Happy Thursday. How's your week been? Are you ready for Friday? You ready for the weekend? Cheers to the freaking weekend. Happy that y'all are here. Yeah, I've been avoiding the spoilers. I mean, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're literally all over the place. Uh, I've had to scroll. I've had to scroll past so many things. I'm really pretty lucky that I haven't had anything spoiled because people aren't people aren't afraid. <laughs> people are not afraid. They are sharing it boldly. I think the I think that the starter evolutions were revealed today, and I'm not looking at them. I'm not doing it. I'm going to experience them in real time. But I follow Austin John plays for those of you that are looking for a Pokemon um, influencer. I think Austin John plays does an incredible job of putting it all together. Very professional, very consistent, does all the hard work up front. So I'll be following him through this process again. Uh, I've done that for the past couple games. And he put up a video today that was talking about the starters revealed. And I'm just, I'm refusing. I have, I will watch his videos after I get to play the game. But until I, until I have that game in my hands and I log several hours into it, I'm not watching a single video he makes. I just can't. I can't do it. I haven't seen the starter evolutions. I don't want to see those until it happens for me. Agreed. Agreed. I'm going to see them. I'm trying to decide what starter we're going to do here. So I'm doing Sprigatito on my on my personal campaign. So that leaves Quaxley and Fuecoco here on stream. And I'm, I'm down for either. I'll just let you guys choose tomorrow morning. I really don't know when we're starting tomorrow. I genuinely don't know. It really depends on how today goes. With how sleepy I am, it tells me that I have a lot to do tomorrow. And so if I have a lot to do tomorrow, then it might not be an all-day stream. But I'm telling you, I have half a mind to get here and work 8.30 and to stream until 4.30. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not even kidding. I'm so excited about this stinking game. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's such a big deal. It's such a big deal of a game. I'm so excited about it. Yo, what's up, Perry? How we doing? Right, we're going to make a list for the top 10 games of the decade. For the 2000s. The way I like to normally do this is I go through every list I've made and I go through probably the top three and add them and then I rank them. So that's what we're going to do. My week is going good. I was relaxing and watching some streams. Rock on. This talk of spoilers brings to mind that God of War has been the only game in recent memory where I've uh, avoided all outside content. I'm enjoying the story so much that I don't want it ruined before I experience it. Now, I will say I haven't seen many spoilers for God of War. Um, so that's good. That's good. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the way I did... It was 2010 to 2019 was the way I did the last one. So this one's going to be 2000 to 2009. Hardest list I've created so far, I don't know yet. These are the top 10 games we released that were released in the decade of the 2000s. My first run of this list ran about 25 games. Okay, so that's just my stuff I wrote last time. Let's go through 2009 and back. Let's find the top three games of each year. Nine persons, nine doors, nine hours. Batman Arkham Asylum and Ace Attorney Investigations were 2009.
Okay. Let's look at 2008. Brawl, Fallout 3, and Platinum. Two thousand seven Hotel Dusk Portal and Imaneko. What was the first one? Hotel Dusk Portal Imaneko. Okay, two thousand six Diamond Tinkaichi Two Guitar Hero Two. third one diamond take aichi 2 guitar hero 2 2005 wild world star wars we love katamari Two thousand four was Emerald, Fire Red, and Budokai three. There we go, there's Pokemon Emerald. I was literally just talking about that. Two thousand three. How oh, weird they swap for some reason. A Wonderful Life, Fire Emblem, and DX. No, Sonic Sonic Director's Cut doesn't just show up. Uh, let's see. What was the other one? Fire Emblem. Which one? Blazing Blades? Binding Blades? Gotta be the Blazing Blade, right? Yeah. Uh, 2002. Sapphire, Wind Waker, and the other Fire Emblem. the first one. Sapphire. Man, yeah, Sapphire is such a good game. Two thousand one was Sonic Adventure Two, Final Fantasy X and Pikmin. And 2000 was Crystal, Sims, and Paper Mario. These otters are super pitchy. Were there otters in that song? <laughs> Paper Mario. Okay. Hey man, what is Checkpoint Church? Checkpoint Church is a church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. We're really a church plant. I'm for real a pastor of this church. And we are just uh, reaching people here on Twitch, getting to know people. We're not forcing Jesus on anybody or trying to ask people to be Christians or anything on day one or anything like that. We just want to get to know people and love the nerds, geeks, and gamers of the internet. Otter Funk, it was called. Got you. Morning, geeks, nerds. I hope you're having an awesome Thursday. Absolutely. But yes, Danger Sweet, feel free to ask any questions or anything that you might have to ask about us. Love to answer any questions. Mostly we're just here to play games and have a good time together. Uh, currently, we're coming up with a list of the top 10 games of the decade of the 2000s. I'm going to go ahead and save changes before I... Oopsie. Before I do anything else. All right, so these are all the top three games of every year. Um... Super cool. I like a chill church. We're, we're doing our best. Uh, whew, this is going to be really tough. All right. Let's get the obvious picks right away. Um, everybody that knows me knows that Harvest Moon Wonderful Life is probably my favorite game of all time. So it's going to be up at the top. Um, FFX is really, really good. Nine Persons is really, really good. Uh, Emerald's probably my favorite Pokemon. 
Pikmin is a really good game, but is it that good? Wind Waker is excellent. Hmm. I was about to tune out if FFX wasn't top five. Now we'll see if it's in top five or not. After tier list, uh, yeah, we'll do we'll do that gamba right after for sure. Okay, let's do our normal game of is this game better than this game? Harvest Moon is it better than FFX? It is. FFX is it better than Nine Persons? Hmm. 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 Mmm. Okay, FFX better than Emerald. FFX better than Wind Waker? Now that one I can actually talk about. Are these all games that came out in 0001? No, these are 2000 to 2009, so this is the full decade of 2000 to 2009. We do have a list on my backlog of every year now, so that's why we're going back and doing it. Doing the decades. Uh, let's see. Is Wind Waker better than Arkham? Sure. Is Arkham better than Ace Attorney? Ooh. Yes. Is Ace Attorney better than Smash? Hmm. No. Is uh, Ace Attorney better than Fallout? No. Better than Platinum? No. Better than Hotel Dusk? Probably not. Better than Portal? Probably not. Better than Umineko? I'll give that one. Yeah, I'll give that one. All right, back up to the top. Is Arkham better than Brawl? Hmm. I'm going to say no. Is uh, Arkham better than Fallout? No. Is Arkham better than Platinum? Debatable. That can't be right. Half-Life 2 isn't on the top row. I've never played the Half-Life games. Arkham better than Hotel Dusk. I don't know. That's really tough. These are very subjective. This is an exceptionally subjective list. That's really tough for me. That's really tough for me. Is Fallout better than Platinum? I think so. All right, so we've at least gotten here. Is Portal, is Hotel Dusk better than Portal? I would say so. Is Portal better than Ace Attorney? Yeah, Ace Attorney better than Imaneko, yes. Diamond better than Imaneko? No way, Diamond's got a bump right up. Probably above Platinum for me. Even though they're pretty much the same game, I liked Diamond more just because it was more to me. Uh, Budokai Tenkaichi better than Imaneko? Yes. Better than Ace Attorney, yes. Better than Bud uh, Portal, yes, yes. Okay. Guitar Hero 2, probably better, worse than Portal, better than Ace Attorney. Uh, Animal Crossing. Gosh, that's really tough. I'm going to say better than Imaneko, worse than Ace Attorney. Star Wars, I'm going to say worse than Animal Crossing. We Love Katamari, better than Animal Crossing. Thanks for the lurk, Perry. Fire Red, probably uh, up here above, above Diamond for me. Uh, Budokai 3, definitely not as good as Budokai Tenkaichi 2, but definitely better than Umineko. Sonic Adventure DX. <laughs> now we're getting into some weird territory. It's probably better than Arkham for me. Is it better than Platinum and Diamond? Yes. Sonic Adventure 2, same scenario. Really neck and neck for me. Let's see. Fire Emblem. Okay, so this is the one with Lin. That's probably my favorite one. I definitely like it better than Binding Blade. I'm going to say I like it more than Budokai 2. Not sure if Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 is somewhere on the list, but that was a game and a half. So, yeah, all of these are the top three of each year. So 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are the top three of each of those years, but the full lists are definitely on here. Okay. Umineko better than Sapphire? Definitely not. Uh, Sapphire is probably better than... Right there. Uh, Pikmin? Oh, first Binding Blade. Binding Blade is probably better than Ace Journey. Uh, Pikmin. Ah, uh, you've had some knockout rounds. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the way I normally do this. If I were to go through year by year and actually look at all 10, there are probably some that would like work their way up the ranks, but I try to be fair to have the top three from each year. Pikmin, I really like Pikmin. It's probably better than Portal for me, but I don't know if it's better than Sapphire. Crystal, right there. The Sims, I mean, I really enjoy The Sims, but it's not as good as Katamari even. It's not even really as good as Animal Crossing. 
Paper Mario was a real good game, dude. It was a real good game. Mmm. But worse than Katamari. Okay. Let's see if we agree with this list and continue sorting. I think at the very least we can take out the bottom five. I feel pretty confident the bottom five are going to remain the bottom five. So let's look again at the top ten. Harvest Moon. My favorite game of all time, probably. Harvest Moon better than Nine Persons? Yes. Nine Persons better than Emerald? I would say so. Emerald better than FFX? I would say so. FFX better than um, Zelda? Yes. Wind Waker better than Brawl? Definitely. Brawl better than Fallout? I, I, that's really a tough one, but I think so. Fallout better than Fire Red? Okay. Fire Red better than DX, definitely. DX better than Adventure 2. Now that's really tough. That's a really tough one. Still, it remains to be tough. I love both these games so much that it, that's a very that's a challenge for me. I'm gonna say Fire Red is better than Fallout 3. Ah, it's really tough, dude. I'm gonna say Sonic Adventure 2 is better than DX right now. Diamond better than DX. No. Diamond better than Platinum? Sure. These these are fine. Uh, better than Arkham? Uh, honestly, I'm going to bump Arkham up a little bit. Hotel Dusk better than Platinum Diamond? I think so. Fire Emblem better than Platinum Diamond? I think so. Tinko Aichi better than Diamond? Yes. Sapphire? Could honestly go neck and neck. I'm going to put it above, above Diamond for now. Pikmin? I'm going to bump it up above Tinko Aichi. None of these, none of these are worth, are worth considering any further. I keep dropping those bottom fives. We might have our list. So none of these are going to bump up for me. No way, Gen 4 rules. I mean, I love Diamond. And I love Sapphire. I love all these games. These are all great games. None of these games are bad games. Okay. We have 15 games here. We have 15 games. Are there any that need to move. I'm gonna take DX off, as much as it hurts me. Hotel Dusk is such an important game to me, but it just doesn't have the weight, dude. Budokai Tinkage is the same, same, same place. It just doesn't have the weight. It doesn't have the importance. It was such a good game. It's really these three that are duking it out for 10th place. I'm going with it. I'm going with it. This is our top 10 list. This is our top 10 list. Wow, that's brutal. That's really brutal, but here we are. This, is, this was the most challenging one so far. Harvest Moon, Wonderful Life, 999, Emerald, FFX, Wind Waker, Brawl, Fallout, Fire Red, Sonic Adventure 2, Batman Arkham Asylum. Ugh, that hurts. Top 10 games of the decade of the 2000s. Oh, that's really rough. That was, that was really, that was a challenge. I hate seeing two Pokemons on there. I almost feel like that should be against the rules, but they're both, they're my favorite Pokemons. I mean, I will play. I if you if you're like, hey, hey Nathan, play a Pokemon game and just pick one at random. I will pick either Emerald or Fire Red. It's so me. Brawl above Melee. So what I did was I picked the top three of every year and sorted those out, Zando. So my guess is that the year that Brawl came out, it was in the top three, but the year that Melee came out, it wasn't in the top three. I don't disagree with you. I don't know, though. I really liked Brawl. I liked the character options in Brawl more than Melee. I had more memories with Melee because I played, like, more with friends than I did with Brawl. But I like what Brawl did with the franchise. I liked uh, I liked what, what Brawl brought to the table. Brawl was the Wii. I liked the characters. I liked the, the, uh, the power-ups that they brought in. I mean, I love melee. I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit in. I'm gonna edit in. I'm gonna edit in my methodology.
for clarity, my methodology was to take the top three games from each year's list that I've already created and sort those games. If a game didn't place in the top three, then it wasn't even considered in the mega list. That being said, this list pretty adequately sums me up, even if it's imperfect. Boom. Can you pull up your top 10 from 2001? I'm curious where Melee placed for you, if at all. Let's find out. Fourth. Fourth. It was literally next. That's funny. It is literally the next option. If I had done the if I'd done the top four, it would have been in the consideration list. That's funny. Also, I'm sorry that you're sick, Xando. That's no fun. That's no fun at all. All right, now we're gonna play a uh, game for impact. Unless I want to do so, Backlogged has this thing called their like Goaty Challenge, where you can pick your goaties for each one, like game of year, best gameplay, best narrative, best art direction, best soundtrack, best multiplayer. But I haven't played all the games I'm going to play this year. There's still so much time. There's still so many days left. How could I possibly say what's the best of 2022? We're not there yet. You know? And so I feel like I can't adequately weigh in on this yet. By the way, look at how close I am to 100 games this year. Isn't that wild? Six or, or eight, game, eight games away. And I mean, I, I presume that we're playing um, Pokemon tomorrow, so that's already up to 93, really. What's this? Ooh, 1,000 games. You know you won't play anything new after tomorrow. Don't even front. You never know. I still, I plan on playing these, those new Game Pass games uh, whenever I'm not playing Pokemon. So anytime I'm not playing Pokemon, I fully intend on, uh, on checking out some of those, some of those uh, new Game Pass games. What are they? I can never remember what they're called. Pentiment. Pentiment and Somerville. I plan on playing both of those. Ooplet, what's Lupin? Lupin looks adorable. Or Lappin. Oh, it looks so cute. I might play that too. Ghost lore? I don't know that. Man, I'm getting I'm getting a little burnt on uh, Game Pass posting alpha. Alpha games are starting to are starting to be a bit irritating. I, I would prefer if they would put finished games on here, you know. They keep doing it. Which I mean, I guess, you know, whatever. More power to them. At least people are getting their games out there. But yep, yeah, there's my list, my top ten list. These remain to be my top five games of all time. My uh let's see, my top ten games of the 2010s. Those of you that have never seen that list. Undertale, Zelda, Stardew Valley, Danganronpa 2, Life is Strange, P5 Royal, Last of Us, Mario Kart 8, Portal 2, and Fallout 4. Look at that. Fallout has Fallout has placed in both decades. That shows how much I really like that franchise. All right. We're going to play a game. We're going to play one of the games for Impact. I'm going to go ahead and type in the chat so that I, I stay honest. You guys keep me honest. Number one is Hindsight. Number two is Endlings, and number three is Exocolonist. All right, and we're gonna spin the spinner. We're gonna spin the spinner, one, two, three. We're gonna find out which one we're gonna play today because I can't pick between the three of them. I want, I'm gonna play all of them, so we're gonna just play whichever one comes up today. Spin. Exocolonist, there you go. All right, let's get right into it. Oh, and we've got oh we've got a, we've got a gamba, we've got a gachapon, we got a movie movie game. Yeah, we got stuff to do. Hang on, let's get that stuff out of the way first. For sure. Okay, first up.
All right, Gamba for today is start a prediction. Has Nerd Pastor Nate ever been to Alaska? Yes. No. One minute on the clock. Make your predictions. Make your bets. Stake those channel points. See if you can win big. See if you can win. In the meantime, we're going to do um, a movie movie game for Zando. Zando, your movie movie game for today is... Tug Speedman, Kirk Lazarus, and Jeff Portoni recreate the best fake or real Vietnam movie inside an apartment with a monster baby and a lady in the radiator. Tug Speedman, Kirk Lazarus, and Jeff Port Portoni recreate the best fake or real Vietnam movie inside an apartment with a monster baby and a lady in the radiator. Good luck. Oh, man. All right, are the predictions up? Choose prediction outcome. Has Nerd Pastor Nate ever been to Alaska? The answer, my friends, is written in the win, and the answer is no. Never been to Alaska. I'd love to go. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I think it'd be a beautiful place. With how much I love the cold, I think that I would enjoy it particularly, particularly greatly. Got chop on for Zando as well. I wonder if there's Tropic Thunder Racerhead. Like you got chop on as a gift. What? Stained. Your electricity just went out? Why? Is it storming? Zando, you got the rainbow beige. Rainbow beige. Pocket badge. Pocket Mons badge, congratulations. All right. Congratulations. There we go. Two badges down. Two badges down. And now we've got to play some exocolonists. But yes, chat's in the clap for Zando. Chat's in the clap. Nailed it, my dude. Tropic Thunder Racerhead. That's a goodie. I'm gonna go top off my tea real fast as well. Now, of course, of course, of the three games, of the three games that we could have had chosen today, um, Hindsight is a two-hour experience. Endlings is a four-hour experience. <laughs> but the one that we chose is the one that is a 10-hour experience. So we'll see. We'll see how much we get through today. Look at my hair, you guys. Oh, what's going on? What's going on with the sleepies? What is this? What is that? Drive me crazy. Cowlicks drive me crazy, okay? You can tell I didn't sleep last night. If I don't sleep well, Cowlick. If I do sleep well, Cowlick. It could be either way. Could be either way. I'm gonna wait on the uh, the water to heat up and then we're gonna play some Exocolonists. Has anybody heard of this game before? I mean, I this game totally slipped past me. I've never heard of it. Um, I missed, I missed when it came out, missed everything. It's been so long since I've seen Tropic Thunder, but I recently fell on the rabbit hole of watching clips of that movie and the name Kirk Lazarus really sticks out. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely, they definitely uh, had a lot of fun with the names and the word play and the story play in that film. They had a good time. Well, good. I'm glad the power's back on for you, Stain. That is so strange. By the way, folks, if you have not watched our VOD from last night, might I implore you to watch our VOD because your boy did the impossible. I'm still so proud of myself. I'll never forget the first time I ever heard of Ex-Colonist. You posted in chat and then spun a wheel. <laughs> yep. 
I have no idea what it's even about. My my assumption with the name Exocolonist. First try. Yep, that's right, Chuck. First try. Um, no, actually, Chuck was supposed to be my one keeping count. But was too busy working. We know it's more than 12. We know, well, technically you went up to 14. We know it was definitely more than 14 tries. I'll never tell how many. The VOD does exist and it's being posted on Saturday, but I'll never, I'll never look at it. I don't know. I thought about clipping it because I'm just so proud. I'm so proud. I didn't want to wear out my keypad. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of tries. It was so many tries, but we did it. We had fun. We enjoyed ourselves. It was, it was the timing was so precise. Should we watch it? I feel like we should watch it. I feel like, you know, what do we have to lose? Let's go watch it. Is it tacky to watch ourselves on stream? Probably. Let's see if we can find it first. tried for so long. There it is. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see if this is the one. Before I show it to you guys. I mean, the, the attention, the focus was unreal. Truthfully unreal. No, it wasn't this one. I just missed the loop. Yeah, that was the one where I missed. <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> I love whenever I get mad, man. Uh, let's see. Look at that, 50, so you had to get 55 seconds, okay? You had to get 55 and that was 56. Oh, is that the one? There we go. So 219, let's go back. This was the one. Let's see how mad I am while I go get my tea. I mean, I would really implore you guys to just watch that controller. Watch that right trigger just going. Good. 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 <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. I really can't even describe the feeling that was not in my stomach. What they got that I don't got, man? <laughs> and then quoting the Cowardly Lion. Classic, classic gamer moves. So the hardest level in the game was one of the first ones you came across. That is according to a YouTuber. So they, for all I know, it could not even be that challenging. And he was just overhyping it, but it was, it, it was real tough, man. Considering that I was able to do it, right? It must not have been that hard. Not to knock on myself that badly, but I acknowledge, I acknowledge in myself that I am, I am a, a fine gamer at best, but I'm no speedrunner. It's not my interest. Considering I could screw up the following. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we went to like the next level 
and I didn't even know what I was doing. I hadn't played the level maybe once or twice and got lost on the way and got distracted and still got S rank. I had like 10 seconds to spare too. Three trophies. Yeah, I felt real good. I felt real good after that. I was on I was on quite the high. It's a, it's an experience, man. Now I know how you feel, Zando. Zando is our precision boy. Our precision lover. And it is not me. I do really like the art for this. I'm very interested to learn more about it. All right. I was a teenage exocolonist. Let's update our category real quick. I was a teen. Simulation, adventure game, indie game, RPG with strategy. Let's make it happen, Captain. I don't think I need a gamepad for this. We'll see. Spoofy. Bye, Spoofy. We'll miss you, Spoofy. We love you, Spoofy. Northway Games. All right, let's see if it'll pop up. Will, yep, there it goes. What's up, Splash? How we doing? Welcome to the stream. All right. Oh, it's very pretty. I was a teenage exocolonist. How's the volume sound? You feel good about it? Interact, submit, friends, cards. I'm sure it'll teach me. I think this is my first time coming to a morning stream, but we're glad that you're here. Welcome in. Ooh, what's a content warning? Hang on. I was a teenage is suitable. It does not contain excessive violent or explicit sex. However, it does deal with mature topics. Okay, so I guess there's your content warning. Be prepared for uh, some dark themes, but nothing too bad. All right, let's get into it. How's the volume for you guys? Do let me know. If it's too loud, too quiet. Ooh, what's this? Wake up. Oh, there we go. Another one. Mature. Maybe unsuitable for some viewers. Mature warning. I am a family-friendly streamer. The games that I play might not always be, but I will always be family-friendly. So I will not read the dirty words. I will not engage with the dirty words. Um, but I they may appear on screen, and they may be read over voiceover. Just a warning and a preface. You wake to chaos, a confusion of light and heat and smoke. Fire! Your head is pounding. You must have hit it and blacked out. But you aren't sure how you got here or what on Vertumna is happening. There's something important you need to remember. Whoa! Your stomach lurches as the floor crumbles beneath your feet and then collapses. Your body aches. Your eyes burn from the smoke. A figure appears through the flames. It's your friend! Your friend? Wait. Why can't you remember her name? She's gesturing and shouting at you, but all you hear is a ringing in your ears. Climb out. You try to stand up, but one of your legs folds uselessly underneath you. It won't hold your weight. Your friend pulls you out from the rubble. She throws your arm over her shoulder and half drags you toward the door. Through it, you see a deep, eerie twilight, deep blue and cold against the heat of the fire around you. Glow season. Wow, what is that? Glowing eyes. You shake your head to clear your vision. Is that some kind of dog, like from Earth? That ain't no Earth dog. That ain't no, ah, that ain't no Earth dog. <laughs> the creature howls and lunges its jaws open. I think I'm dead. I think I died. I think I died, I'm dead. I died, I'm dead, I died. That was a scary thing. I was a teenage exocolonist. For those of you that are just joining us, we're playing this game because it is a uh, game that was nominated for Games for Impact at the Game Awards. Um, I always play all of those games. I play all of them that they nominate. It's my favorite genre of game. All right. You are born on the stratospheric Earth's first colony ship, halfway through its 20-year voyage to a wormhole at the edge of the Sol system. Your parents run the hydroponic gardens, which make fresh air and vegetables for the ship. Like the other colonists, they bravely chose to make this one-way journey to the uncharted planet Vertumna IV uh, in the hope that they could escape Earth's troubles. They had you the old-fashioned way, merging their genes like they merged their cultures and traditions. They name you Solanake, Solana, Solane. I like Solane. 
Hey, you're a bright-eyed child with an active imagination. Sometimes too active, your mom says. Use the sliders on the left to choose pronouns and late teens appearance. These can be changed at any time. Well, I am a boy. I'm a he, him, and a masculine appearance in my late teens. What does that mean? Androgynous. Okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to be masculine appearance. Because that is what I am. Oh, could I have moved that more for? Okay. Uh, I am very he and very masculine. I'm, I'm, I'm the man's man, right? I'm the epitome of manliness with all of my video games and my Stardew Valleys. You have vivid dreams of things you've never experienced, dirt under your feet, skies overhead, endless jungles, and strange animals. You wonder if this is what Vertumna will be like. Every child on the stratospheric is given one genetic enhancement. By age six, you see the first signs of yours. Ooh, okay. I don't know how I like the sound of absorbent brain. Extra fingers, gross! I like eagle eyes because I have bad vision, and that would be nice in my fantasy to actually have good vision. Uh, calm temperament also sounds pretty good, and super strength certainly sounds like a superpower. Of all of them, the one that sounds like a superpower the most is Eagle Eyes and, uh, and Super Strength. I don't know about Absorbent Brain. Uh, we're going to go with Eagle Eyes. Plus one skill on Strength Challenges. Oh, is this like a card game? Get them extra digis? Not a chance. I don't want those fingies. Uh, your eyes have both Eagle and Owl DNA. That makes sense. Uh, so you have Superhuman Long Distance and Night Vision. Folks, it's a little loud for me. Let me know if it's too loud for you. Not only can you see all the way to the hollow projector from the back of the classroom, you can read Professor Howe's private holopalm notes. Sometimes they say confidential, which is exciting, but you don't understand most of the big words. The other kids, if only I had an absorbent brain. Uh, the other things, uh, the other kids think that you're a little weird, except I am energetic and loyal anemone. Wait, oh, these are people. There's our names. Anemone is a very silly name. All right, energetic and loyal, tough and gentle, bold and confident, quiet and adventurous, studious and mature, shy and sweet. <laughs> Aw, Tammy. Um, my friends in school were almost always the uh, bold and confidence one, so I'm gonna say those are my those were uh, those are always my friends because I'm not necessarily those things. I also was very good friends with energetic and loyal people. I could go with bold and confident or energetic and loyal. Uh, normally, I was the quiet and adventurous or the studious and mature. I wasn't really tough and gentle. I don't really even know what that means. I'm going to say, I'm going to go with my gut. Bold and confident. Hello, Mars. Mars is a natural leader. Uh, whenever you're all playing together, Mars is the one who comes up with all the ideas. She can be a little bossy, but that's part of her charm. She always organizes fun stuff for the kids after class. You're both founding members of the Secret Fun Times Club. Let's read the other one. That didn't, that didn't uh, read how I wanted it to. Energetic and loyal Anemone. Anemone is the most enthusiastic person you know. Your favorite memory is the time she taught you how to play zero-G sports ball after class. She never means to get you into trouble, but somehow that sounds like my friends. That sounds like my friends. Yep. 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 Anemone's loyalty. That's the one. That absolutely. We got in so much trouble back in school. I was always, I was never the troublemaker, but I was always with the troublemakers. Anemone. You're 10 years old when the ship finally reaches the wormhole. Professor Howe says it's like a doorway to other star systems with the planet Vertumna 4 on the other side. You're on emergency drills for months to prepare. When the day finally comes, it starts with a rumble, then things start to slide off the tables. You hurry to gather near the escape pods just in case. The emergency area is crowded. Is, am I sad? I'm stressed. No, I don't want to be stressed. The emergency area is crowded with families. It's going to be fine, Selene, your dad soothes. We'll be through the wormhole and down on the planet before you know it, just like we've practiced. Your mom gives him a sharp, worried look. Red emergency lights switch on as a siren begins to sound somewhere distant in the ship. You try to breathe slowly like you were taught, but you're very scared. You look out a porthole. The stars are gone. When you're frightened, you... I get in touch with my emotions. You bawl like a baby. It feels so good. You aren't the only one. Nearby, your classmate Tammy has tears streaming down her cheeks. Mars is trying quietly to console her. She sighs as your crying makes Tammy wail even more loudly. Your dad puts his arms around you as you let it out. You wait. The shaking builds. I like how I'm building my character through a narrative. That's really fun. Then everything starts to get very weird. The hallway stretches, stretches, and you're stretching too. Your arm's impossibly long. Your head feels like it's slowly filling up like a balloon and contracting down to the size of an atom at the same time. Is this the wormhole? You hear the distant, ominous squeal of metal giving way to as the ship shudders and lurches in slow motion. The weirdest part is a sense of deja vu. You're sure this has happened to you before, and you know somehow that everything is going to be okay. 
The shuddering reaches a crescendo. You hear an impossibly loud crunch and feel weightless for a few seconds before gravity slams you back against the wall head first. You black out. As you slip unconscious, you feel yourself twisted out of time. It's today, yesterday, and tomorrow all at once. And more than just one tomorrow, lots of them, different tomorrows. You find yourself in a place that you know from your dreams, tilled fields, dramatic ridges, and a stranger, but also not a stranger. Grinning as she grabs your hand, hurry up, she says, I'm not going to let you miss this. Distinct, distantly, you can feel the ship shaking has stopped and hear your parents' worried voices. Feeling safe, you slip further into the warm embrace of the stars. You drift. Gradually, your consciousness reforms. You wake up in the med bay. The med bed under you plays a soft tone, and an automated voice speaks. Two weeks have elapsed. The patient's cranial injury has completed healing. They may now be safely discharged. As the fog lifts from your head, you realize something seems different about this room. It's so... bright? You try to focus on the window. Something is definitely different. Sunlight? Instead of the familiar blackness of space, bright light from twin blue and yellow suns is streaming through the windows. You peer out and see fields, grass-walled domes, and walls ringed by giant mushroom-like trees. There are construction materials everywhere and people walking around outside on the ground. You better get out there and join them. Rush outside or cautiously step. Man, if I'm landing on a planet for the first time in my entire life, I'm rushing. Oh, oh, okay. WASD, I presume? Oh, well, maybe I do want a controller. Oh, Tammy jumps as you step out of the ship's quarters behind her. You're awake. Are you all better? You better go see your dad. She points southeast towards some geodesic domes. To walk, click on the ground. Ah, okay. Click on character talk to him. Okay, well, I don't have WTSD then. Tammy looks concerned. You slept for so long after you bumped your head, she says. I bet your parents were worried. Your dad is working over in geoponics near those domes. They're called greenhouses. I would go with you, but, um, well... This is as far as I've been since the ship uh, from the ship since we landed. Tammy stammers, blushing. It's scary outside. Have you seen the new merch release schedule for Fangamer? I haven't. I have seen that they've been doing some discounts, but I haven't seen release schedules. Um, I did. I did uh, buy some stuff from Omocat. I said that the other day, but okay, neat. I like the world. I like the art. I like the style. I don't know what Geoponics is. Command not here. Bye. Geoponics. All right. Well, these look like the big domes. That's it. Hey, Dad. Say my dad. Tomorrow is Ace Attorney? Oh, boy. Then Elden Ring, Delta Rune, and Undertale. Oh, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to take all my money? Are they wanting all my money? So, Lane, your dad gives you a big warm hug. I'm so happy you're finally awake. Dr. Instance thought it'd be best to keep you asleep while your noggin healed. Your mother and I thought you might sleep away the whole year, my snoozy little gooseberry. He checks your head and looks relieved. He was clearly very worried about you, but covers it with jokes and smiles. Aw, oh, you love your dad. Aw, oh, you love your dad. Welcome to Vertumna, he says, gesturing around you. You've never seen the stratospheric from the outside except in pictures. The ship has been separated in two and parts taken off to form other buildings and a big wall around the whole colony. The alien jungle creeps right up to the wall. Only the geodesic greenhouses pass outside it, dotting their way up the hill. Um, how'd you do this so fast? The last four days have been Tamagotchi, Hades, and Shimagami, Tensei, Nocturne, and V. Like V, 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 V? That V? You've been asleep for weeks, my dear Aubergine, he says, and these geodesic greenhouses practically put themselves up. But some of this is only a quick temporary solution, he admits. We'll keep growing and improving things. One, oh, Shemagam, oh, Tim's Nocturne and V, got you. One day our little colony will be as big as a whole city. Oh, before I forget, he pulls a package from his satchel and hands it to you. You blink and stare at it blankly. Do you know what day it is, he asks. You honestly don't. You remind him that you've been asleep in Medbay. Happy birthday, he shouts, wrapping you in a warm hug. Your birthday already? You feel a dizzying sense of deja vu. You stare hard at the wrapped package. You know exactly what is in there. You remember it. No, you dreamed about this package some years ago on the ship. Inside will be a small medallion in the shape of a sun that your dad made by hand. I ain't telling him. How? How did you know this? It's exactly as you imagined, as you dreamed. A feeling of panic rises in your throat. Your hand shakes, but how? Your dad notices. Are you okay, Solane? He snaps his fingers. Dr. Instant shouldn't have let you out so early. Sometimes those sleeping meds take a while to wear off. Uh, they might make your head feel funny for a few hours. You nod. Maybe. Maybe that's all it is. Someone shouts your dad's name. Listen, I'm so sorry, Solane, he says, but I have to get back to work. There was an accident when we landed, and he stops himself. Don't worry. We're going to fix it, your mother and I. 
Professor Hal is expecting you in classes if you're feeling up to it, your dad says, pointing west to the engineering wing in the rear end of the bisected ship. Then he points to the large doors you came out of earlier. Or you can relax in our quarters until you're feeling better. We'll talk later tonight, he says, then kisses the top of your head and ruffles your hair. Have a wonderful birthday, Selene. I love you. I love you too, Dade. To enter buildings, click on the door on the flag beside it, or get close and press enter or another action, action button. Then choose an activity for the month to gain skills and advance time. There are 13 months a year and 10 years to the end of the game? Okay, so I have 130 options. 130 actions to the end of the game. You'll only have time to focus on a few things. Woof, that's not a lot of things. Is action? Uh, is it an action to speak to someone? Does this take an action? You see Des sitting on the ground behind some bushes. Is he hiding from somebody? He seems to be watching the gate in the wall to the south where grown-ups are coming and going. Kids aren't allowed past the walls, he says quietly without looking up. They say there's nothing to be afraid of, but then why do we need walls? You stare at the gate. Ooh, it's ominous. Uh, and have a sudden rush of memory so strong that you think you might faint. You imagine something crashing through the wall, something enormous and dark and wriggly. For years in space, you've had half-remembered nightmares of monsters, of your ship being destroyed, of sifting through wreckage that used to be your home, trying to find something. Your dad always told you the dreams weren't real. Breaking you from your daydream, Dis whispers, I think there are monsters out there. Our parents will keep us safe. Maybe, Dis mumbles. He doesn't look very convinced. He looks down at his feet. If you believe everything they say, I guess you should go to school now like a good boy, he sneers. You shake the vision from your head. It was just a dream. Dis must have made you imagine it with his creepy talk. Why does he always have to be like this? So did that take an action? I don't think so. Oh, interesting. So this is the this is the clock. System, friends, memories, character traits, rebellion, relationship with adults and colony government. Uh-oh. I like adults. Physical and mental exhaustion. Understanding other people. Charisma to command people and speak in public. Artistic ability and capacity for novel ideas, both social, problem solving, dedication to neatness, study of machines, study of plants, physical strength. Ability to find things, tactics, and familiarity with xenofauna, hunting, and ranching. Fascinating. Oh, it's my friend! We're friends, right? Hi, it's so lane. Anemone seems really at home here. She's rolling a sports ball around with her foot, making patterns in the weird blue snow. This stuff is different from snow on Earth, she tells you, because it isn't cold, but it's still neat, and you can make stuff out of it. Your foggy head clears a little. Anemone is simple, physical, real. You always feel grounded near her. Why aren't you in school? She smacks her forehead. School! I wondered where everybody was. I guess I'm going to be late for humanities class. She doesn't look very worried to you. It's okay, she says. Professor Howe is chill. He won't mind, but we should probably go now. She grins and starts running towards engineering. Hey, race you! No fair. She's getting a head start. No, she isn't. She literally didn't move. All right, this looks like sports ball. I want to know what all the things are, is the thing. There's so many things to see. How am I supposed to do all the things? I guess I just gotta, I just gotta, just gotta, gotta commit. Gotta commit. So this is my home, yeah? The living quarters. Relax in the lounge makes me happy. One relationship with Tammy. Forget one memory. Fascinating. Okay, so good. So I can at least click around and explore and see the options. That's what I want to do. Use the notice board. Hosting our first annual Vertumnalia, Vertumnalia festival during the second month of dust. Take precautions inside, outside the colony boundaries. Xenophon have been sighted in the area. Survey teams are investigating. A lot of names. I guess we should just go to school. I don't feel like hanging out in the living quarters. Engineering, a low throbbing noise comes from the engine room, which provides power to the colony. Other corridors lead off to teaching labs and med bay. You know the route to your classroom well, but the rest of the wing is off limits to children. Congruence, the ship's onboard AI, beams down at you from a nearby hollow screen. I can do a voice. Let's see. Don't forget to study hard, Selene. Okay. Study life sciences or study humanities? I mean, if we're being real, yeah, I'd be studying humanities. Welcome, Selene. Professor Hal greets you. I hope you're all warmed up and ready to study the glorious humanities. 
history, literature, language, media, and philosophy, and yes, if you're lucky, we'll have a little ancient earth poetry too. He seems excited about that last bet. By the way, if anyone's interested in taking engineering classes, please register through Congruence's scheduling system when you have a chance. She'll be helping me teach them. What's up, Kuro? How we doing? Welcome in. We're playing one of the games for Impact. I was a teenage exocolonist. Um, so far, we were on a plan. We were on a, We were on a, a colony airship, spaceship, floating through space, going to the planet Vertumna. Uh, we were born on that ship, so we've never known life. But now the ship has landed, and we are colonizing this planet. So, hence the exocolonist. Today's assignment is an easy one, Hal says with a yawn. Oh, today's assignment is an easy one, because I was up late repairing Congruence's subterminal, and I could use a nap. I'd like you to write an essay on what the Vertumna colony means to you. Oh. Ah, that's what I totally would do. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. Either friendship or doodling. Hmm. 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 Let's doodle. I'm a doodler. Look at that face. That's the face of a doodler. True to his word, Hal leans back in his chair and begins to snore. You doubt will even bother reading this assignment, so you just practice drawing made-up animals on your holopom instead. When Hal wakes up, oh no, I got minus five kudos! What are kudos? He asks a few students to read their essays to the class. You're docked a few kudos when he discovers you didn't bother to do the assignment. He thinks your animals are pretty cool, though. Yeah, because they are. My animals are real cool. When you work or go to class, you'll play a quick card challenge as the month passes. Move cards to fill the five panes and make the best hand you can. Yes, order matters. If your total in the circle on the right reaches the goal value, you win. Social credit deducted. What is this? Some kind of black mirror? Depending on your card, some challenges can't be won, but you still get a reward for doing your best. Bonus for flushes. Bonus for pairs. I'm probably just going to have to do this to figure it out. The more cards in a flush, pair, or straight, the higher the bonus added to your total. Cards can also affect each other and can be rearranged to find the best total score. Okay, so I need to score a goal of five. But I definitely don't have that. Right? I only have three. Crawling. I'm going to put them in the order that I feel like they would happen. No, crawling would definitely happen. Wondering would happen, then crawling would happen. Then you'd start stepping. And then you would start discovering. Then you would start doing that. I don't know. That just that makes sense to me. Is that not what I'm supposed to do? Two of a kind. Three of a kind. Okay, so yeah, I kind of did it right. Yeah? So I got nine. I only needed five and I got nine, so it's good. I did good. Victoria, she worked well. Yeah! Your skills increase when you work to go to school with extra skills if you win the challenge and a kudos bonus if you make the highest scoring hand with your cards. Ooh, did I do that? Is that what that is? I did it! Uh, working also increases stress, which prevents you from working if it reaches 100. To relieve stress, take a month off to relax in the quarter's wing. Cool. Your parents have been working from first dawn to well after dinner every day. You know growing food is an important job, and it's vital to get crops in the ground right away. But there seems to be something more than that. It's such a change from growing up in the stratospheric, that's the name of our uh, spaceship, uh, when you saw them all the time, you stay up and wait for them at night before going to bed. Though you can tell they're exhausted, they make an effort to spend time with you. Aw, good parents. I'm sorry we haven't seen much of you, little gooseberry, your dad says. Your mom watches you as she works a pebble out of her gardening tiller, which also serves as a crutch. How have you been holding up? I learned some stuff. I'm glad to hear that, your mom says. I want you to study hard, work hard, and stay out of trouble. Your dad smiles, and Professor Hal can give you kudos if you get good grades. You can spend those at the depot once it's open. You know, says your dad, raising an eyebrow at your mom, I think there are lots of different ways to learn, and school is just one of them. You can learn from working on a hobby or by helping a friend. I agree, Dad. Your mom shakes her head and sighs, though you can tell she's trying to put on a gentle expression. We both agree that this colony is an experiment, and that means we're going to do things differently than on Earth. You're old enough now to start making your own decisions about your education and future, and if that means you find your own way, we'll accept that. Your dad puts a hand on your shoulder. We'll be proud of you no matter what you do. Try talking to your friends. They may have ideas for how you can spend your time. And come by geoponics, your mom adds. We could use your help. 
Oh, I could shovel some dirt. Well, that sounds like a blast. Okay, mid quiet. Wow, that is not a lot of, that's not a lot of time. So this is all the month in a year, is that right? Okay. This is fun. It really does, it feels like another solo, uh, a solo tabletop game, kind of like Citizen Sleeper. Anemone is bumping a sports ball with her wrist, trying to keep it in the air. Heads up, she shouts, and bumps the ball in your direction. Think fast. Do a trick. You catch the ball with your wrist, bop it up, and headbutt it back to Anemone. She grins her huge gap tooth smile. Whoa, nice move, Selene. Yes, they spelled whoa correctly. You bounce the ball back and forth with her, trying to see how many times you can rally and keep it going. Anemone tells you about the new sports ball court, a proper regulation size court, way bigger than the little zero-g one on the stratospheric. Her brother, Calm, is uh, coaching the junior sports ball team this year. He's so great, she says. He's good at everything, especially spiking. He's coaching me to play awesome like him. You should come join us. Okay, so that didn't cost me a day. So talking to people doesn't cost me a day, but it can get me bonus points. Like, I just got a bonus point into toughness. So I feel like I should always talk to people. Hello, my little potato, your dad exclaims, smiling warmly. What have you been up to today? Uh, playing. He breathes deeply and looks slowly around. Vertumna is magnificent, isn't it? You nod. Seasons, he shouts, tossing his hands wide. I miss seasons. Back on Earth, it got much, much colder, and the snow wasn't half as pretty as our spark snow. He sighs, stretching. You just wait until dust season. Both the suns will be high in the sky, and it'll be real hot then. You'll see. The world kind of reminds me of Dune. You find your mom hard at work uh, setting up the greenhouses with a small construction crew. You've seen these plans pinned to the wall of your family's quarters for years now. These geodesic domes will house the more delicate plants from Earth, spinach, tomatoes, maybe even fruit. She takes a swig from her canteen as you approach. Looking for something to do, she asks. Remember, Solane, you're responsible for your own schedule now that we've landed. You can decide how to spend your time so long as it's productive. She points towards the engineering wing in the back half of the stratospheric severed frame. Professor House still expecting you in class, but a well-rounded education includes practical application. You're old enough to help with the work around here. She claps her hands on her shoulders. They've got another minute. Anything you need to know? Uh, wow, there's so many options. Um, what are you doing in geoponics? What's happening in engineering? What can I do in my quarters? What's the garrison? What's going on in command? Can I join expeditions? Let's go with command. I think Seek said they need someone to deliver supplies from the depot. They're also setting up a shop there, if you've got some kudos to spend. And of course, that's where Captain Uticott? I mean, Governor Uticott works. But you shouldn't bother her. She's a busy woman, and she doesn't have your mother's patience with kids. You try not to giggle. Your mom isn't usually known for her patience. Okay, so I can ask about all of them. Perfect. What are you doing in geoponics? She looks down and nudges at a sprout growing from her feet. It's green, the color of earth plants. We're doing our best, she says, but it hasn't been easy. I just hope the potatoes and corn can handle the weather here, she says, glancing up at the sky. I hear it rains like crazy in the wet season. She takes a long look at you up and down. You're growing fast, Elaine, but you're still too young for your real farming. Instead, well, there's a lot of soil that needs to be hauled. Seeing your disappointment, she nudges you on the shoulder. Don't pout, it'll help build those muscles. You'll need them now that we're out in the real world doing real work. Out here, we have to rely on our physical strength. She flexes her biceps. Your mom is really strong. What's happening in engineering? House teaching classes on life science, engineering, and humanities. If you pass all your tests, maybe he'll let you work there in a few years. Your father thinks you're old enough that school is optional. I don't agree, but I'll be honest with you, she says, gesturing to the fields. We do need every pair of hands we can get. If you want to work with me here in geoponics, I'd suggest studying life science. If you don't have a good enough grasp of biology and ecology, I'm going to stick you on shovel duty. What can I do on the quarters? If you need a break, you can see the, visit the lounge and see your friends. But, she warns, raising a finger, I don't want to see you lounging around all the time. You need to work hard, too. What's the garrison? Security Chief Red is organizing a sports ball team. You used to play, didn't you, back on the ship? It'll be different with this planet's gravity. Of all the adults in the colony, Rhett and your mom are the most like soldiers you see on the holobed. For a moment, you think your mom's going to suggest something else, then she shakes her head. You're too young for defense training, so don't worry about that yet. Just enjoy yourself and stay out of trouble. Can I join expeditions? Oh, you're too, too young to leave the colony. It's dangerous. She shakes her head. Your father would be worried. There's so much we still don't know about the world out there. Let the adults find out. Then maybe you can join them in a few years when you're older. She gives you a stern look. She isn't going to budge on this one. For now, stay inside the walls. Okay, bye. Oh, there's so many options. So many things to do. Hey, Mars. The sharp whistle interrupts your thoughts. Hey, Solane, Mars calls out to you. Come here, I have a job for you. 
You walk over to Mars, who's sheltering from the snow under the ship's overhang. It is so gross here, she complains. This spark snow would ruin my good clothes. At least on the ship we had climate control. Ugh. Tammy made me some soy sweets, but there's no way I'm going out there in all this weather, she continues. Since you like running around in it, could you fetch them for me? Okay. Good, Mars claps. She's probably just down the hill near our quarters, Mars sighs. She's scared to take more than a few steps from the door. All she wants to do is hide inside and make sweets. So I'll go get some sweets. Tammy is staring obliviously at the sky, smiling to herself. She startles as you approach. Oh, hello, Selene, she says, putting her hand on her chest. Do you need something? I'm here for Mars's soy sweets. Tammy smiles at you. Oh, it's so nice of you to help out Mars. She's a very important person, you know. She hands you a box wrapped in a pink and yellow scarf. One order of mango soy sweets made fresh this morning, she says. Please tell Mars that she can have her scarf back, okay? Uh, she used some of her kudos to nanoprint it for me because it's so dusty here, but I, I, I think I'm getting used to it now. Tammy smiles again and tucks her hair behind her big elven ears. Mars is so cool, she says fondly. Sometimes she's kind of bossy, but I know she really cares, too. Okay. Hey, Mars, I got your stuff. Mars puts out her hand expectantly. Give it here. Oh, I want some. Oh, I don't have enough persuasion. I ate them? <laughs> what? Why would I say such a thing? Here it is. You hand over the box of soy sweets with a smile. Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rebel. Why? Mars takes it and giggles. You're such a good sidekick, doing everything I say. She opens the box and hands you a soy sweet. Your tip, she tells you. Oh, an administrator seeks looking for someone to do delivery jobs for the depot, she says. I don't want to do it, because, like, you running around out there? No. Just go through there, she says, gesturing to the door behind her, and tell them I referred you. Okay, so I just got a job. That's kind of cool. But I feel like I should learn more. I'm young. My brain is, is not very absorbent, but is somewhat absorbent. So I feel like I should do something. Oh, I need reasoning of five. Interessant. So I can't even do that. I'm going to study humanities again. I'm going to be a good speaker. We're going to focus on humanities. This month, you've decided to explore pre-holographic media on Earth, which is a pretty great excuse to kick back and watch movies all day. It's hard to believe that all movies used to be 2D. Boring. Feels too much like learning to be fun. Okay, so I got my cards again. Anemone's loyalty. All strength cards under two become two. Wow. So I can have four twos in a row? Holy moly. Whoa! Super goal! Nice, dude. Look at all those points. Love it. This week, you got a few more bouts of deja vu, remembering what somebody is about to say or do just before they do it. Sometimes they actually do it, but not always. This morning, you were sure Professor Hal was going to trip on an uneven floor in the cafeteria and spill his plate of hash browns. He even told Mars to watch. He didn't, though. As Professor Hal walked away, his hash browns safe for today, Mars called you a liar and a dummy. At night, your dreams are all mixed up with stuff that you know can't be real. You're chased by monsters the size of buildings, only to be saved by strange people you've never met. You're holding hands with somebody you love. You're crying as you help lift a shrouded body into the colony recycler. Everything seems so familiar. But when you try to recall their faces, when you wake up, they're smeared in your memory like wet paint. But what if what if those things haven't happened yet, but they will someday? Got a lurk while I head to urgent care. See you, Zando. Hope everything is okay. Anytime you try to tell someone they think you're playing a trick or that you're sick or you need to go to the med bay, you eventually decide to stay quiet about your strange dreams. Why? I don't want people to worry. I don't want to be normal. So your powers are fun. Hmm? I don't want people to worry. Your parents have so much on their minds already. You have a feeling that something is happening at Geoponics they don't want you to know. You don't understand it, but when they come home at night, they look really sad. You don't want to make that worse. If you just keep going to classes and staying out of trouble, it'll be easier for everyone, yourself included. Oh, I'm getting older. Or sadder. Well, I'm very stressed, huh? Maybe I need to take the month off. Who are you? Tangent. Tangent, you're super cool looking. I love your design. Tangent is hunched over her hollow, pine, uh, hollow palm, frowning and poking angrily at the air. She speaks without looking up at you. Professor Howe wants us to prep a list of native flora with pictures. There should be a catalog on the colony holonet, but I can't find it anywhere. Uh, I'll help you find it. 
Aw, she liked that. Friendship. Plus organizing. You launch your own hollow palm and start searching the colony's holonet archives for a list of vertuminal plants and the animals. Ten minutes later, you find it buried under survey, lo survey logistics in the expedition's net. An enemy passes by and pulls a face at the two of you. Hey, holo nerds, she shouts. School's over. Come play sports ball in the sunshine. Tang just rolls her eyes. Or Tange. Tange. So what is this? Is this the sports ball? The garrison. Yeah, I don't want to play sports ball. Ain't playing sports ball. So if they don't have the bubble of their head, does that mean that I don't need to talk to them because they don't have anything to offer me? Because some people have it. Some people don't. You see Tammy sitting quietly near the entrance of the lounge. You've known her for, well, your entire life. Back on the ship, you... You used to play with her. We were friends. Tammy had the best doll collection. After her mom died, her dad used all the nanoprinter creds to print her a different doll every month for a whole year. Her ears perked up when she sees you. Oh, hello, Selene, she says. Her voice is soft and dreamy like a beam of starlight. Do you want to play dolls? I sure do. <laughs> yes, I want to play. I always want to play. You don't think Tammy will ever be too old to play with dolls. If anything, she has even more of them now. She takes you to her quarters and brings you out the entire Spacey Stacy doll collection. A disturbingly realistic baby with real bowel movements and two super fancy posable dolls named Lily and Tilly who can be programmed and move on their own. Tammy isn't very good at the programming, so Lily and Tilly just roll around awkwardly when you turn them on. You cover quickly by saying they must be breakdancing at a club. The two of you spend the afternoon making up stories of their rise to stardom as professional dancers. Sweet. They're cute. Um, I guess I should go to class again? Oh, the door's open. Expeditions. You step cautiously through the colony gates. Hello there, kiddo. Uncle Tonin blocks your way with a smile. I'm afraid expeditions are off limits for now. It's not safe out there for kids. You better toughen up so you can join the squads when you're older. Interesting. So if I if I if I'm not tough, then I can't go. That's not fun. Oh, hello. Someone else to talk to. Cal is riding through the geoponics garden on his hoverboard. The board comes to a sudden shuddering stop on the rocky ground in front of you. Cal falls off but catches his balance before he eats dirt. Hi, Selene. Uh, real ground is way harder to hover on than ship floors. There are bumps everywhere. Um, yeah, that sucks. Oh, no way to mean it like that, Cal exclaims. It's actually really cool. Hovering outside is rad. Look at this. He runs over to a small depression in a nearby hill and presents it like it's something amazing. Look at this. It's a skate bowl. Cool. Can I try? Sure, but uh, please be careful. Mom says if I break my hoverboard, we can't make another one. You take turns riding around on the bowl, trying to get up uh, enough speed, going down one side to come back up the other. You don't land any tricks. It's hard just staying on the board with this uneven ground, but it's still fun. You know. I guess I could learn or I could shovel some dirt. But I feel like if I'm going to focus on the humanities, I need to focus on the humanities. Let's focus. There's some sort of emergency in engineering that requires Hal's attention. So today's class will be taught by the ship's artificial intelligence, Congruence. Uh, let's see. Good morning. Today we're going to talk about the formation of the Vertumna Group and our decision to leave Earth. It's a very exciting topic, and we think you're finally ready to hear about it. Let's dig in. You know how it started. Economic and environmental instability, coupled with deeply entrenched hatreds, had thrown the Earth into chaos. And you know how it ended. In that chaos, your parents formed the Rotumna Group with a plan to leave Earth. Twenty years later, they and their starborn children, you, slid through a wormhole and ended up here on a planet you called Rotumna. But there's so much you don't know. Congruence pulls up a hollow projection of an assuming human with a firm maternal gaze. This is Planktronic Ascendance Wang Botha Schmidt, the spiritual leader of the Vertumna movement. They were what people called a speculative fiction writer. The Vertumna Project proved that their writing, though speculative, was far from fiction. Wait, a sci-fi author? Yes, their best-selling novel, novel, Life Beyond the Einstein-Rosen Bridge, told the story of a fictional utopia on the other side of a real-life anomaly at the edge of the solar system. Scientists had been investigating the wormhole for years, but it took a poet to imagine we could travel through it. Wang Botha Schmidt's writings uh, centered around the idea of humanity building a technological utopia on another world. Translated to a hundred languages, this was a compelling idea to people at the time, so fans started connecting in vert space. Far from just a book club, these people bonded over mutual aid amidst the increasing unrest in their own countries. They were committed to Wang Botha Schmidt's idea of the future where everyone is treated equally without prejudice. But they realized it couldn't be done online. Though committed to social justice, the group saw the impossibility of forming a truly egalitarian society while also reckoning with their own implicit biases and the diverse context of their real lives. They realized that this was the work of, few, of generations, 
and the solutions must look to the future, as Wang Botha Schmidt did. Uh, so they got together. The image of a squat concrete building with a rooftop garden replaces Wang Botha Schmidt. Around the edges of the classroom, the hollow projector gives the impression of towering walls topped with razor wire. The first Rotumna colony, 400 people volunteered to sacrifice their own cultural beliefs to work through these doors, to walk through these doors, agreeing to come up with a new way of life that could be taught to their children. Babies were conceived from egg and sperm donors chosen by lottery and raised communally like you as the second generation of the Vertumna group. These babies were your parents. I love logging in just to hear a robot voice. Well, it's an AI speaking to us. It makes sense. Uh, some kind of cult. They mix their DNA. They mix their cultures. Okay, mix their cultures. I like that. The hollow projection now shows the compound under siege. As more colonies were founded, word got out the Vertumna group social experiments. Assimilationism was an unpopular ideology at the time because it had been used to commit terrible genocides on Earth. This, combined with panic that the Vertumna group was destroying the family unit or raising an army of gen gen gene tech super soldiers, brought the colony under attack from all sides. By the way, Dreamy Kiwi VTuber, how are we doing? Good morning. Glad you're here. Welcome in. Um, everyone fears what they don't understand. The, Im oh. the image of the burning compound is replaced with the stratospheric on a launch pad. Luckily, the next phase of the Rotunda project was ready to launch. 100 colonists were selected to leave Earth on a colony ship to see the far-flung corner of the universe with a new human culture. The ultimate goal of the Vertumna group was you, children. A generation raised completely unburdened by troubles that plagued Earth. Isn't that lovely? Um, but how did they build the ship? What was Earth like when they left so nobody on Earth was like us? Uh, what was Earth like? Terrible! The institutions that had given people the illusion of safety were torn down, and wars were rampant, both resource-based and ideological. Large parts of the Earth were rendered uninhabitable by climate change, pollution, and nuclear war, especially the critical food-growing regions of the world. The Vertumna group weren't the only ones trying to escape Earth, but as far as we know, we are the only success. Uh, so how did they build the ship? Orbital voyages were a hobby for the ultra-rich in the early century, so there were several relics to be found in museums. The difficulty was not in acquiring a ship, but in making it wor spaceworthy and in the logistics of the launch itself. The group crowdsourced enough funding to purchase and repair the ship. As for logistics, well, you're speaking to the solution right now. I was acquired by connected group members, along with the gene tech that created you and your parents. The stratospheric was the first manned vessel to navigate the wormhole at the edge of the solar system. Given the state Earth was in when it left, it may have been the last. So nobody on Earth was like us? The Vertumna group members have a unique culture, but it's formed from a combination of many heritages from Earth. Even the language you speak, Esperanto, was invented to bring people together. And don't worry, you brought your best heritage with you. You're humans. So much information! Your head is stuffed with ideas, it might burst. Your head is so stuffed with ideas, it might burst. Professor Hal and your parents never mentioned this stuff before. They waited to tell you because they wanted you to grow up without feeling different based on your genetic makeup or family history. It's hard to imagine having a different culture than your neighbors. You wonder what it's like, everyone celebrating different holidays, eating different foods, speaking different languages. Are you missing out? Or are you better without it, like the original colonists believed? It's hard to say, as the decision was made for you long before you were born. All you can do is be the best Selene you can be. Get to work! So, Dreamy Kiwi, this is, um, this is a game called I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. It's one of the games for Impact from the Game Awards this year. And we're giving it a shot. We're seeing if it's a good game or not, trying it out, uh, seeing what made it nominate nominatable. Looking for more difficulty, the harder card challenges option will keep you on your toes. Want to focus on the story? This will replace future mini games with a quick coin flip based on your age and skills. You can change either option anytime from the setting menu. I mean, let's try the hard one, sure. Okay. Push through. Interesting. All right. So, so interesting. I mean, I want, I want to pretty much lay them down exactly as they are. Oopsie. Nope, 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 nope. Thank you. Is that the best I can do? No, I could do three of a kind if I moved that one over, but then that would eliminate the two of a kind. Yeah, I'm going to say this is the best. Victorious! Aw, oh, but it wasn't the most. Aw, oh, kudos. Rats. I did get one friendship with Tangent. That's fun. Next month. Hey, Tangent. Let's see, who is worth talking to? Is that an egg? 
I found a hefty red Xeno egg. But why? Need a break soon? Yeah, my stress level's looking pretty high. I'm gonna rest this one. But I wanted to see if there's anybody to talk to first. Nope. Nobody's got the speech bubble. I'm gonna talk to Tangent just in case. Tangent sniffs the air. It stinks out here. It stinks out here. Not just one stink either. Every day is a new stink. Today it smells like... She wrinkles her nose. Like that time the waste reclamation unit broke down? Yuck. You haven't noticed the smell. She sure is sensitive. Or maybe she just likes the stale air inside the ship better. Here, I have something for you. Do I? Oh, I have the egg. I don't feel like she would like the egg. She doesn't strike me as the egg type. So I can give gifts too? Oh my goodness, this is like a real sim. I love it. Tammy's dad is the head of expeditions, which means he's out surveying the jungle every day. The morning you see her crying in the doorway as, she, as he leaves. I don't like when he goes out there. She sniffs after he's gone, but he's so brave. And so are you. That's why I like you, Selene. I don't know if she would like the egg either. Who wants the egg? Hello? Who's interested in an egg? I don't know who would want the egg. Would you want the egg? Or, or can I just give the egg to whoever I want to impress? Is there like a correct gift or is it just a gift? Either way, we gotta rest. Okay, the ship's quarters are where everyone sleeps, eats, and hangs out. We are sleeping. Relax. The lounge is a long, well-lit hall and along the outer hull of the ship's midsection. It's strewn with tables and cushions and serves as a communal living area. Hey, I gotta focus on work, so I need to hop off. Can I ask a favor? What's up, Kuro? Ask away, my friend. You flop down into the lounge's big beanbag pile with some of the other kids. Cal has a dazed, peaceful look on his face. The air smells so, so good on Bertumna, and so does the dirt, even. You notice his clothes are filthy, but obviously Cal couldn't care less. Anemone bounces in. Holy crap, there's so much space to run around and play in. Com and Chief Rhett set up an outdoor sports ball court, and it is way huger than the old one on the ship. Tangent carefully selects one cushion from the pile and perches on it. The school's expanding some of the empty engineering bays, she tells you. And we're getting a big new lab to do experiments using local resources. There's so much to learn about this planet. Can you message me your initial thoughts on this after you finish streaming? For sure. I'll try my best to remember. Uh, I can drop it over in the, in the Discord. Even over in the video games channel. We'll see how it goes. So far, uh, I'm engaged. I think it's a lot of reading. So... Uh, if you're into reading and into tabletop styles, I think the card game feels pretty basic so far. Um, I will, I'm hoping, we have another hour and a half, but I'm hoping that in the next hour and a half we'll be able to get to the second year. Um, surely. Surely. Okay. And then he rolls her eyes, but Tange continues. We shouldn't forget our studies just because we've landed, she says primly. Uh, school is important. Let's play outside. I want to explore the jungle. I miss space. Ah! Do I want to just focus on her? Do I want to focus on Anemone? Do I want to focus on Tange? I'm a fan of Tange. I think she's super cute. I love the art. The purple hair. It's the checkpoint purple, dude. Check purple. But she's also the one that I've seen in the future that we're in love with. So is, is she supposed to be our love interest? Anemone's already got a natural boost. <sighs> Tammy or Tange? Tammy's just so scared. We're going to go with Tange. Oh, I'm so sorry. Tammy nods in agreement. Okay, I got I got love with Tammy there too. Perfect, yes. Love it. Tammy nods in agreement. It's scary out there, she mumbles. I'm going to stay close to our quarters for now. You've had less of the deja vu, dreams come to life feeling this week, but you're starting to think you'd even imagined it. Suddenly, you feel a prickling sensation in the back of your neck. And remember that Mars is about to enter the lounge and tell everyone to look outside. You stare at the door. Mars walks through it as if on cue. OMG, everybody look outside. They're hoisting a flag over command, she says, clapping her hands excitedly. You know what that means, right? She stands tall with her hands on her hips. Vertumna is officially humanity's first exocolony ever. You look out at the flag, feeling dizzy, and silently mouth the words along to what she says next. You remember this moment so well. This is history, kids, she exclaims, wrapping anemone and tangent under each arm. And we were there. Relaxing. Took the month off. Oh, yes. 
Do you want to forget? No, I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget these things. First steps or the Vitamina group? I'm fine with knowing those things. You wake from an afternoon nap. You squint into the pink-tinged light slanting through the windows. You must have fallen asleep in the lounge. Tammy's shadow falls across your nest of pillows. Oh, I'm sorry, Selene, she says, giggling. I didn't mean to wake you up. It's just so nice outside with pollen sparkling in the sunlight. I wanted to open the windows. You rub your eyes blearily. Ugh, you're having the weirdest dream. Um, since you're awake, you should visit the cafeteria. Auntie Seton is making a new kind of candy. She says it's made of cotton. Isn't that weird? I have to go tidy the creche first. Then we'll meet you there. Save some for me, okay? Tammy skips off towards the creche, humming to herself. Go get that free candy. In the cafeteria, Auntie Cena is cheerfully handing out masses of pink candy, puffy and soft like clouds. Oh, so lame, she says, handing you a wand with some candy spun around the end. Here, try some of this. We used to have it on Earth. You pull off a piece and give it a taste. It's so sweet at first that your mouth puckers. You've never tasted anything so sweet and so real. It's not at all like the soy sweets that the kitchen nanoprinter can make. It melts in your mouth, leaving a gritty residue on your tongue. You wait until everyone is gone, but Tammy never shows up. You look down at the cotton candy in your hands. It's wilted a little from the humidity, uh, but it's kind of like her hair, you think. Pale pink and so soft. You keep some to give her later. We love Tammy, huh? You're relaxing in your family's quarters after dinner. Your mom had to run off on some kind of council business, so you and your dad are playing a holiday game together. When you're just ready to head off to bed, your mom returns. You can tell from the defeated slant of her shoulders that something has gone terribly wrong. I gotta go bail. All good. Bye. Bye, Dreamy Kiwi. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, we will probably be streaming some Pocket Mans tomorrow. I don't know when, but uh, anticipate seeing that that uh, that stream pop up. <laughs> we'll probably be live uh, at some point because i got to play some Pocket Mans. Uh, but thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you. Uh, your dad starts to ask her what happens, but she waves him away and approaches you. She sits down and takes your hand. No. No, 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 no. What, what happened to Tammy? It's the first year. It's the first year. They uh, did they kill her in the first year? Let's let's see what mom's got to say. Selene, I'm I'm so sorry to have to tell you this. She starts. Her mouth quivers as she swallows, working on her next words. There was an accident this afternoon in the crash. Holy what? What? I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I mean, you know, games for impact, dude. I'm impacted. Tammy's died. You try to understand her words. Tammy? Dead? That's, that's not possible. You suddenly remember the cotton candy you were saving to give Tammy. Pink and fluffy, just like her hair. You put your hand in your pocket to get it, but what comes out is a sticky, dark red lump of hard goo. You stare at it. Your mind blank. I gotta know what happened. Your mom tells you as simply as possible that Tammy was killed by an electric shock from a broken hollow projector. It was just an accident. You press her for more for an explanation. A little girl is dead. Someone you'd grown up with. Someone so much like you. She wasn't sick or anything. You just saw her this morning. She was right there. Why? Your mom's eyes are sad when she tells you. Sometimes there's just no reason why. I am so thrown off. Could I have done something different? Is it my fault? You aren't supposed to, you aren't used to dealing with death and you don't know what you're supposed to say or do. You sort of mumble okay, then get changed and crawl into bed a, four, a full hour before your bedtime. You try to fall asleep, but you toss and turn for hours. You eventually drift off to fitful dreams of that small, sticky red lump of cotton candy. I'm speechless.
Mars is staring into space looking somber. She doesn't even notice you come up beside her and barely reacts when you say hello. I'm, I'm thinking about Tammy, she says quietly. She used to sit down the hill there in the spot in the sun every morning. She'd just sit there for hours in the sun doing nothing, just being happy. You stare down the hill to the spot near the entrance of the quarters. You can imagine her there working on some little craft project, humming to herself. I miss her too. Now she's dead, Mars says, making a face. How's that for fair? Of all the people, how come it had to be my friend? You don't have an answer. You've never heard Mars call Tammy her friend before, but of course she was. Tammy was everyone's scared little sister, even though she was older than most of you. Mars clicks her tongue. Oh, yeah. Administrator Seek is looking for you. I guess they need someone to do delivery jobs. She waves vaguely at the door behind her, distracted by her thoughts. This game! That really... I'm... I... I'm... 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 Cal is sitting in your mom's flower garden with his face in his hands. He's clearly been crying all morning and probably all yesterday, too. He and Tammy were really close. Whenever you guys used to play house in the crash, Tommy was, or Tammy was always the mommy and Cal was the daddy. Even though you were just little kids, you kind of always giggled about how obviously they were going to be together forever like a princess in a night. I miss her too. <laughs> Me too. Looking up at you, you can see how puffy and red his eyes are. Me really, really too. Tammy always liked these flowers, he mumbles. Sometimes I pick some for her. He runs his hands over the pretty white flowers. Don't. Don't tell your mom, okay? Tears well up and slowly leak out of his eyes. He doesn't even blink. He just stares at the flowers as the tears run down his cheeks. You decide to give him some space. Tange. Tange, comfort me. Tange is pacing around in front of engineering. She looks upset. It shouldn't have happened, she says. Tammy's what... Tim what happened to Tammy? It shouldn't have been possible. There was no reason for that hollow projector to break. Professor Howe said it was recently serviced and nothing was wrong with it before it just... She gestures angrily. Just blew up for no reason. Nobody would have wanted to hurt her, so why? How? It doesn't add up. Sorry. Sorry, Selene. I, I want to think about this some more. I hate when I can't find the answer. What does my best friend have to say? Beeple. Anemone is chucking rocks at the strato, sending metallic clangs ringing through the colony. Stupid planet, she yells. Stupid crash. Stupid spaceship. She bends down to pick up another rock, but instead just sobs and braces her hands on her knees. Stupid everything. Why'd she have to die? It's not fair. Kids aren't supposed to die. No, they sure aren't. Hey, Dis. Can you believe Tammy died? Dis, Dis acts morbidly. I heard Chief Engineer Instance tell someone about it. He lowers his voice. Tammy got shocked by a broken hollow projector, the one in the crash with the dancing teddy bear, you remember? When she touched it, she got chucked all the way across the room. He makes a sailing motion with his hand, and bam! She was dead before she even landed. You, I didn't want to know that. Oh, sorry. Dis replies, tugging at the sleeves of his other side of jacket. I'll, I'll shut up now, sorry. Ugh, this is so weird. I guess I want to go learn. <laughs> I don't really want to learn. A low throbbing noise comes from the other side. Don't forget to study hard, Selene. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to learn. I'm going to study some humanities. Continue working on those. I feel I don't know if I should be focusing on multiple things. I might be kind of uh, screwing the pooch here by focusing too much on one thing and not enough at all on this. But we'll see. Okay, study the humanities. Uh, let's see. We got a 2, a 0, 1, 1, and 0. All right, so let's go this. Ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. I feel like that's got to be the best possible, the best possible way I can do it. Victorious. Nope, wasn't the best one. How could I have done it better? I wonder. The colony is going to hold a funeral for Tammy. Do you want to attend? If you don't feel up to it, you could just skip it and take the month off instead, or you can get back to work. Um, oh no! Yes, yes, yes! What a mercy! The colonists gather in the recycling room. Bringing organics down to be recycled here is one of your chores, but you've only come here for a funeral twice. Both times, a colonist has passed away from natural causes during the 20-year-long journey from Earth. This is the first time there's been a funeral on Vertumna, and the first time for someone you actually knew. The mouth of the organics recycler has been polished, and a wreath of yellow flowers placed over the opening. Inside, you see a shrouded figure, Tammy's small, fragile body. Tammy's dad, Uncle Tonin, is here, as well as your parents, an antecedent, and the rest of the council. 
Cal is here with his mom and her partners, already crying in their arms. The room is packed with people, and the feeling of grief is so thick you can taste it in your mouth. Governor Uticott stands before the assembled crowd. There are no words to ease the pain we feel today, she begins solemnly. There's only the sad company of those of us left behind to share the burden of that grief. Tammy was our child, she continues, one of the first humans to be born in space and the first to die on an alien planet. In her short life, she exemplified the very arc of human accomplishment, bending hopefully towards life beyond our humble earth. She is the first of us who can truly call Vatumna home. That's beautiful. Her passing was as senseless as it was sudden. Losses like this are impossible to hold within oneself. A painful reminder that life is impossibly precious and fragile. But they also remind us, as always, that as a community we are capable of great strength. Uticott closes the door to the recycler. You hear Uncle Tonin sob over the hum of the particle disintegrators beginning their work. Ah, that's morbid. As a community we remember Tammy. As a community we return her body to the soil that nourishes us. In this way, Tammy... Our child from the stars will never truly be lost to us. The ceremony is adjourned, but a few people stay back to console Uncle Tonin as he keeps vigil over the recycler. Cal and Uncle Tonin hold each other and weep openly. Your mom stays behind to receive Tammy's remains. As the head of Geoponics, she'll be responsible for adding them to the colony's precious supply of brown soil from Earth. Your dad accompanies you out of the recycling room. He clears his throat. <clears throat> I uh, want you to know that you don't need to be okay he says, clasping his warm hand on her shoulder. If you want to take the rest of the month off, everyone's going to understand. Excellent. You feel better just having said goodbye. Tammy was your friend, but you feel like the best way to deal with losing her is to throw yourself into your school and work. I wouldn't have put it quite like that. I wouldn't have put it quite like that. I wouldn't have quite put it like that. Next one. Tangent. You're my girl. Tangent shou uh, shoots you a distracted look. Sorry, she says. I'm not really good at cheering people up. It's fine. It's fine just talking to you. Just chatting. Just want to know more about you guys. Anemone is unusually still today. She's sitting in the dugout of the sports ball pitch, finding, uh, fiddling with an ugly doll with red hair. If I had chosen Tammy as my best friend, would she have lived? Tammy gave me this, she sighs. I kind of told her to shove off because I don't play with dolls. Why did I have to be so mean to her? Or do you think they killed her because it was obvious that I was becoming friends with her? And so they're they're going for the gut punch. Hmm. Hmm. Humanities. We push onward. Uh, let's see. We got three zeros. Hmm. Let's do zero. One. Oopsie. 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 One. Two. Oof, that's not very good. A bare minimum. Let's try this. That's 14. It's also 14. Also 14. Also 14. Also 14. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's better than the goal. That was the best, yeah. Okay. Man, if they just kill Tangent out of nowhere, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So Lane, Tangent says, approaching you with purpose. We need to discuss my brother. Who, Dis? Yes. Yes, Dis, she says impatiently. I need you to figure out where he's been disappearing. Ever since we landed, I barely see him anymore. He doesn't even come home at night, sometimes, and I... She trails off and looks at her feet. Well, I, I'm, I'm not on very good terms with my brother of late, but I... Well, people are becoming worried. You get the feeling Tange is the one who's worried, but she doesn't want to admit it. Uh, I'll find out. Thank you, Selene. She says, looking relieved for a second before her expression hardens again. I mean, it would be a ridiculous waste of resources if something happened to him and no one would know where he was or how to find him. Right, of course. Tange doesn't get worried. Oh, Dis. Where 
Where are you, buddy? Hey, there you are. Hey there, friendo. You tell Dis that his sister Tangent wants to know where he's been disappearing off to. His eyes flit briefly to yours, then he stares vaguely off towards the engineering wing where his sister is reading on her holopalm between classes. He doesn't say anything. She's worried about you. She doesn't care about me, he says sullenly. Tangent's just worried she'll get in trouble if I don't come home one day. He scowls and picks at the hem of his sweater. She doesn't care about anything but her schoolwork. You better tell me or else. So either I threaten him? <laughs> okay. I guess I either threaten him or leave him alone. Uh, uh, I don't really want to threaten him, but I, I, don't, I guess I'm just going to leave him alone. His shoulders slump in relief as you go. I'm keeping an eye on you, Dis. Dust is such a dry, hot season. Both suns are high in the sky, baking the usually lush for Temnan jungle. If there's a breeze, it's warm, and you guessed it, dusty. Your parents are up early every day before dawn, which comes far too early for your liking. They're usually gone by the time you wake up and home after you're asleep, so you have to visit them at work if you want to see them. Good morning, Gooseberry. Your dad greets you cheerily. Have you come to see the harvest? Your mom and I are gathering crops from actual Vertumnan dirt this week. I just miss you. That sounds neat. Sure, that sounds neat. He shows you around the rows of corn and beans from the earth. They all look a little yellow and scraggly, not what you'd expect, but your dad enthusiastically points out the vegetables ready to harvest. Don't forget, he tells you, the Vertumnalia Festival is coming up. There will be a talent show and a science fair. I'm sure you're eager to participate, Zolane. Eager. I can hardly contain my excitement. Hi, Mr. Turquoise Hair. Yeah, I know, right? The, the hair looks real cool. All these characters look so cool. Also, how are you, Ben Boone? How are things going? How's your week treating you so far? All right, we're going to do some more humanities. I'm focused. Tangent's least favorite part of humanities are the days you study earth poetry. She just doesn't get it. If the offer was trying to tell us something, why didn't they just come out and say it? Is this another dating sim, McDoohoo? No, not really. Although I am treating it like one because I'm definitely Tangent and her purple hair. Uh, I'm very curious about. So uh, a little bit of that. But um, no, it's uh, it's uh, definitely a life sim. It's kind of like a solo um, TTRPG so, fa so far with a lot of reading. So it's your favorite kind of game, McDoohoo. Your absolute favorite kind of game. By the way, I played Citizen Sleeper, uh, which was the game I remember you played on one of the Game Passer plays. And it, it looked super interesting to me, but I kept putting it off. Uh, and I got into it, and I got into it, dude. I 100%ed it. So love that game. Glad things are going good for you, Ben. Okay. Let's see. We got a three, two zeros, three zeros, and a one. Hmm. That's the one with the dice rolling? It is. Hmm. So these cards I can use? Can I use these any time? No. Huh. Plus one for each unplayed. I didn't know I didn't have to play cards. So if I do this. It's not that good. Not that helpful. Yeah, it's not that helpful. Hmm. Okay. Well, it didn't do what I wanted it to. Okay. Uh, that's not even my goal. So I'm doing something wrong. If I can't even reach my goal. Man. Still not there. This is real tough. Okay, what if we start with that one? I can't do it. 
All right, well, I guess I'll push through. I mean, it's five stress, but... Yeah, I got the kudos. So that was the best possible option. So that, that, that one just wasn't winnable. Interesting. It's time for Vertumnalia. Uticot and the council have called a festival to celebrate life here on the planet Vertumna. Everyone gathers in the colony square to hear Governor Uticot's speech. In Earth's history, Uticot begins and then clears her throat and waits for everyone to quiet down. <clears throat> In Earth's history, Vertumna was known as the god of seasons, change, gardens, and fruit. It's no coincidence that our forebears of the Vertumna project chose to take on such an auspicious name in the hopes of seeding future bountiful seasons of humanity. We will continue this tradition of Vertumnalia, a midsummer festival to celebrate our Vertumna, this lush planet upon which we find ourselves today. Clap. One clap. Everyone cheers and applauds. The members of the council all get up on stage one at a time to give their own short speeches. Governor Uticott announces each one. Governor Uticott, Seek, Ret, Instance, Blulu, Antecedent, and Melatonin. <laughs> oh, Surveyor Melatonin is my favorite. When it's your mother Flulu's turn, she announces that tonight you'll be eating some of the very first crops grown from Vertumnan soil. Your eyes go to the feast table. Aboard the stratosphere, it would have been mostly soy-based food from the nanoprinters, spiced up with, uh, with what precious fruits and vegetables could be grown in the small growing bays. This year, the earth plants look even less robust than usual, but they're supplemented by some Vertumnan plants you've come to appreciate. Juicy watato pods and slabs of edible fungi. Uticott takes the stage after everyone on the council has said their piece. What is a festival without festivities, she asks. Professor Howe and Security Chief Rhett have organized a three-part competition for the kids. Oh, Professor Howe and Security Chief Rhett have organized a three-part competition for the kids. Good luck, children. Which one do you join? Definitely the talent show. Yeah. It's an all-singing, all-dancing, all-talent extravaganza. <clears throat> the entire colony gathers to watch the show after dinner. First up. Dis plods to the stage uh, as a pop song starts to play. He just stands there, deadpan, staring into space with his arms at his sides while the singer belts out the first verse. Then as the chorus comes in, he suddenly springs to life, dancing and lip-singing to the lyrics frantically, waving his arms and grinning maniacally. Then collapses back to standing, still once the chorus is over. It's hilarious, but you aren't sure you're supposed to be laughing. Next, Mars performs a choreo choreographed dance routine to an old Earth song by an AI idol. She has light emitting balls at the end of her hair, which she swings around everywhere in the dim light while controlling a small floating ball drone who dances with her. It's total overkill, but it is impressive. Your turn. What do you do? Um, creativity challenge. A comedy routine, a magic act, or hoverboard. Well, I did do stand-up comedy in high school, so let's go for it. Comedy routine. Yuck, 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 yuck. Story challenges have three rounds instead of one. After every round, you'll keep the cards you didn't play and unlock an extra slot to play them. Losing isn't always a bad thing in story round challenges. Hmm. Say more. <laughs> Tell me more about what you mean. Hmm? So I guess if I have three slots, fourth slot, fifth slot. Curious. Hmm. I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to do or not. No, I didn't realize they'd go away. Okay. Well, that was a bit of a waste. That was a bit of a bust then. Okay, okay. All right. Yes, 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 yes. We pulled it off. We pulled it off. All right, last round. Oh, we gotta get 28 this round. Holy moly. Am I gonna do it? I think 15 is the best I can do. Man. It's 15 again. I can't do that much stress. 12. I guess I gotta give up. Oh, that's such a bummer. 
no skill changes. Your performance is, well, it isn't as good or whatever Mars did, according to the judges. That was a tough act to beat. Maybe next year. After the festivities are over, everyone takes time off for a much-needed break. During the fierce heat of dust, a few days rest is exactly what you need to feel refreshed. I'm sad I lost. All right, another one. Have you gone outside the colony yet? Tanj asks you. I hear all sorts of terrible things. Regardless, we're not allowed to stray from the gates unless we're on expedition. Tanj rolls her eyes. Not that it stops my brother. Ah! Ah, no! I thought she might also like that I was studying humanities. I'm still studying. Oh, no. Tange. I thought we were reds. Would you like an egg? Oh, never mind. I used it. My bad. Let's see if there's any more eggs. Any more things that I can grab. A log. Anything else that I can have? Any other things just lying around, lying about? Should I go talk to her little brother again? Is that still like a concern? This is hanging out near the south gates, his hands in his pockets, idly staring at the ground and digging the toes in the boot and dirt. He nods at you, but doesn't say anything. I guess I'll, I'm going to go try giving this tree branch to, uh, to Tange. Let's see what happens. Would you like this? Would you like this mushroom log? She likes it. Oh. <laughs> Tange shrugs. You should probably just keep it. I don't even know what I'd do with that. When you insist she keep it, she shrugs again. Sure, maybe I'll find a use for it. Okay. It's fine. All right, humanities. We're focused. You're doing a creative writing in teams, and you're paired with Mars. You wish it was with Tange. She always does so well on these. The theme is Earth's natural environment. Mars takes the topic at face value and wants to write about how beautiful everything is on Earth with blue skies and green plants everywhere. Uh, huge oceans that went forever. It always looks gorgeous in the carefully staged movies you've seen on Holovids. Um, sure. What's wrong with Mars' idea? I don't care. Friendship, kudos, and memory. Writing an essay. Mars takes the creative part of creative writing literally, describing Earth's lush forests and verdant plains and deep jewel-like oceans with a reverence bordering on the obscene. She's pretty passionate about it, so you let her do most of the work. Mars insists she gets to present it to the class. This, too, is a good idea. Mars is a born presenter. You aren't sure that it's totally based on facts, but it is received well by both your classmates and your teacher. You get a handful of kudos for doing well. I forgot I could buy things at the store. I need to do that since I have the kudos. Plus one if card is... Oh, card to the left is... Bleh. Let's see. Okay, well, maybe I don't need the plus one. No! I can't lose again! I can't lose again! Oh, I know. I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. I know what to do. What's up, trombone? How we doing? Ah, so close! How could it be so close? On my lunch break. Oh, man. No! All right, well, I guess five stress is worth it. I didn't get kudos either. There was a better option. Man, how? Trombone, how is your lunch break? Do you have all of two seconds? Uh, don't have anything... Don't have anything. Oh, man. I've done done it now. Is this the depot? No. Where is the depot? I want to go buy things. Oh, I need to talk to you two. You know, Selene, you're all right, Mars asks as you approach. You blink at her, trying to figure out what she means. You're an all right what? As your stunned silence, Mars laughs and tosses her hair over her shoulder. You're all right, she repeats. You actually have good taste, unlike all these other nullheads. Ever since we landed, it's been, help with this, Mars, and don't waste resources on that, Mars. It's boring. At least you understand the importance of sophistication. You shoot the breeze of Mars a bit longer. At some point, Dis skulks out of living quarters and has to pass by you both, clearly trying not to draw your attention. Where's he going now, Mars mutters to you, uh, then raises her voice so Dis can hear. 
Try not to get eaten by aliens, she calls out to Dis. If you die out there, they can't use your body for fertilizer. Don't be a waste. Uh, uh, no, I don't like being a bully. No, I don't like being a bully. Shut up, Mars. This is cool. You say it loud enough for Dis to hear. He looks at you with wide eyes before scurrying towards the walls. Huh. No accounting for taste. She seems to respect that you challenge her. She watches Dis disappear from sight, then shrugs. Maybe you can get through to him. I've tried, but he doesn't care about contributing to the colony or being popular or earning kudos or anything important. I'll leave. I'm not going to push any further than that. I got respect, but I'm not going to be mean. Where is the depot? Where is the depot? Because I'd like to buy things. So Lane? Nope, not there. Okay, you've got something for me. So then I trapped it in my room, Anemone says, telling you all about the bugs she saw in her quarters. Its wings were as big as my hand, and it had feelers like, whoa! It was bouncing all over the place like boing, boing, boing. She gestures excitedly, swinging her arms over her head. The bugs were so big, and they're everywhere. I was going to give it to Tan, she says. She loves gross bug stuff, but she said I should just let it go, because if it stung me, I might get weird mutant powers. I mean, other than the one I already have. Uh, and I wanted to see if I get more weird mutant powers, so I started jumping around off higher and higher things until I was jumping off the back of the ship, and I got in so much trouble that it wasn't even that high. She stops in her tracks. Hold on, she says, stooping to rub irrit irritably at her knees for probably the hundredth time in the past five minutes. Ah, I'm going to die. I busted up my knees, and it's so itchy when my scales grow in. Annie, don't pick it. Chief Steward antecedents voice rang out across the uh, garrison yard. Pleasant but firm. It instantly transports you back to being in the ship crash, tugging on her skirts and calling her Auntie. Anemone stands and stands up straight, her hands flying to her sides. But Mom, Anemone whines, digging her fingers into her knees as Auntie Seed approaches you both. It's so scratch-tastically itchy! I know, lovely, Auntie Seed and sues her, patting down her riotous red hair. But the more you pick at it, the thicker your scales are going to grow in. And Emily tucks her hands under her armpit to keep from scratching. What if I want to have cool scales? She pouts. Antecedent smiles indulgently. At this rate you're going to, I'm sure you'll be covered in them before you know it. No need to rush. And Emily's skin is dotted with patches of protective blue-green scales that grow in wherever she gets a cut or scrape. She rubs the patch on her jaw indignantly, the one where she ran headfirst into the food synthesizer back on the ship. Learned an Emily augment. Got chop on, you got it. I need this to time on like Dragon Ball. Ball Z, it's time to got chop on. Oh, it's the Boulder Badge. Two Poke Badges in one day. That's pretty great. Nice. All right, you got the Boulder Badge. Congratulations, Trombone. Badge number three of the day. And I am going to go turn on that heater real quick because my, my feet are freezing. It's cold today, you guys. For those of you that are just joining us or are just hopping in, playing a game called I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Uh, it was on the Games for Impact. It was the Boulder Badge, Brock's Badge. All right, heater is on. The heat is on. Uh, but this is from the Games for Impact. Uh, I always play through all the games that I haven't played on there. I'm relying on captions. Boulder, Boulder, Boulder. The queue for the banana printer is over a week long, so I patched your pants with scraps from your brother's clothing. Please, try not to put any more holes in them or yourself, okay? She hands the clothes to Anemone and kisses her on the forehead. Anemone sticks out her tongue and gags. Yuck. Anemone evaluates the clothes as her mom walks away. Galactic, she breathes as she runs her fingers over the odd-colored patches. Then, right there in the middle of, of the yard, she unashamedly squirms out of her pants and pulls on the new ones. Uh, wow, I look like a fighter jet from the hollows, she exclaims, showing off her new pants. Like when they'd stencil your kill count on your plane? Or like a really cool scar? Yeah, you get it. My pants are scarred, just like me. I gotta find the depot. All right, there's my friends. How is Tangent only one heart? I've worked so hard. What? All right, my memories, my gear... Uh, you'll keep adding to your deck as you age. You can forget cards by spending time relaxing. You have a limited number of gear slots based on your organization other skills. Click gear. Uh-oh. Where is the depot? Didn't give Tangent enough eggs. Clearly. Apparently she's into bugs. 
Is the depot in here? No. Where is the depot? No. I don't understand. No. Where is it? Is it this thing in the center? No. I feel like it's got to be here. Because I wonder if I could buy things with my kudos to impress Tange. But not if I can't find the depot. Is there like a guide? A map? Guess I should save. It's been a long time since I've had a name a save, dude. I mean, unless I'm just losing it. Is this the depot? Dad, where is the depot? It must not be a thing yet. I can't just be this dumb. Humanities. Tan swipes so quickly and neatly on her hollow palm, and her class notes are so well organized. Professor Hal shares them with the rest of the class an example of good note taking. You're embarrassed about how sloppy your own nose looking bears and get to work. Whoa! That's so many. Um, I gotta get 13. I don't know if I can. I'm gonna try. Wowzer! 16. That's so many. Win. See, I'm getting friendship every single round. Just love me, Tangent. Oh, whoa! Why is it purple now? Wet season. Tangent is watching a construction crew build scaffolding for the new engineering pavilion. They're using mushwood, which is so light they can fit one person, or that one person can easily lift a 10 meter long pole and stack it into place. She points towards them. Human beings are so great, don't you think? Before we landed, this was all just dirty jungle. Now it's civilization. I've been learning about adaptability and writing in biology class. The books say, the books say it's what sets us apart from the animals. Like, we don't need fur because we can make warm clothes. And if it's too hot, we can make air conditioners instead. Maybe the animals have neat adaptations. Tangent rolls rise at you. Maybe, but even if they do, I haven't seen any sign of intelligent life here. It's just the big, dumb xenofauna. Uh, yeah, you're right. Humans rule, Xenos drool, says Tangent. Literally. If there's intelligent life here, why don't we see any cities when we landed? She scoffs, checkmate aliens. Together, you watch as the foreman puts the blueprints for the scaffolding into the floating screen of her holopalm and raises it to the scaffolding to check their progress. I'd like to see an alien do that, Tan says pr primly. Humans look defenseless and weak, but we're the strongest species in the galaxy. Who else can literally bend reality to their will? Not a stupid alien, that's for sure. She puts one finger to her chin. I'm living proof that humanity is greater than our biology, she says. All of us are, really, with our genetic enhancements. We're the next step in humanity's evolution from great ape to galactic super species. Okay, so she's a little cocky. Maybe a bit supremacist. Sermon complete. Ending it by singing Michael Bublé's rendition of All I Want for Christmas. It's gonna be a moment. Make it happen, Captain. We love the boobles. There, you're looking a little worn out, my little firefly. Your dad greets you, looking concerned. You know, despite what your mom might say, there is such a thing as too much work. Maybe some R&R over in the lounge would help recharge those solar cells. What do you say? Maybe I just need a hug. Your dad throws his arms wide. Well, get in here, Tiger Butter. After a long hug, you do feel a little better. Your dad gives incredible hugs. Thanks, Dad. Thanks for the hug, Dad. Thanks, Dad. Really like the hug, Dad. Dis, it's pouring rain and everyone's trying to stay under the grass roofed palapas. Everyone except Dis. Off in the distance, over at the wall near the sports ball field, he's definitely skulking. 
Man, perception. Nothing is high enough to do any of the things, and I focused so hard on creativity. Um, I feel like he just wants to be alone. Okay, more humanities. I'm nothing if not focused. Hal's been called away for a council meeting, so, so congruence is filling in. She tells you that today you'll be learning about the history of capitalism on Earth. Uh, you mean why humans used to have nice things and now we just eat mashed trippet and soy cakes? Mars says smugly, Pullies. Earth humans might have messed everything up, but at least they had style. Ever patient, Congruence ignores Mars's contribution and projects a hollow vid into the classroom. A solemn woman in weird clothes identifies herself as Haven Constance Odenheim, an educational designer for the Vertumna Group, and tells you that the following experience has been created specifically to teach you, the third generation of the group, about the largest contributing factor in Earth's destruction, capitalism. You and the other students exchange worried looks. Let's see. I sing that to my oldest in the delivery room, and it's all I can think of when reading Zechariah's song, When John the Baptist is Born tune in. John the Baptist is what his friends call him behind his back when he annoyed them. John the B got you. Uh, that's a lot of effort though. Are you going to wear the buble black suit? Make it happen. Let's do it. Jesus is worth the effort. Uh, I wish I had one of those. Jesus is worth my effort, but are you? All right. Time to talk about capitalism. You spend the day in an interactive experience that covers the history of capitalism from market feudalism to its transition to colonialism. Then it's major, hey, we're doing colonizing, so maybe we should talk about that. Uh, like industrialization, mass production, and corporatism, it ends with discussion of how it collapsed in the late 21st century as wealth inequality and environmental concerns finally weakened its hegemony, along with the planet itself. <laughs> well, what do you think? <laughs> how hard of a stance are we taking right now? Uh, it sounds horrible. It can't have been that bad, or this is just more weird cult stuff. I mean, some people, some people treat it as a cult, sure. Rebellion, fight the power. Okay, the educational experience tells you that despite being regarded by many as simply an economic system, capitalism has been responsible for more violence on Earth than any act of war. From its very beginnings, as the colonial powers spread mercantilism across the globe, it required a constant supply of people to exploit through by any, any means necessary. It took centuries for people to realize how horrible capitalism was once people could no longer hide from its racist colonialist history. Tell me how you really feel, game. You're partway through the lesson when Cal realizes the parallels. But we live in a colony, don't we? Aren't we colonizing Vertumna? Isn't that wrong? I just said that. Of course not, dummy, Mars reasons. There aren't any people here to take the land from, just a bunch of animals. Yeah, let's kill all the dumb animals. Uh, the animals count too, I don't know. Cal nods in agreement and Mars is not impressed. I squashed a Dorb's moth the other day, she retorts. Are you going to put me in future jail for money crimes? Yikes, Elaine. You should just lock yourself in your room if you're so worried about hurting the environment. Tangent watches the exchange silently, but turns her head and doesn't meet your eye when you look at her. Tang! Tang! No, Tang! Love me, Tang! Love me, love me. Say that you love me. Victorious. Yeah, best possible option. Look at my creativity. I'm so creative. I'm like the most creative there's ever been. Okay, <laughs> okay. You're having a terrifying, familiar dream. A monster crashing through the walls, unfathomably large, every part of it wriggling and moving and searching for something. It tramples through the colony as you watch helplessly. Time shifts to the wreckage of your home. You're picking through it, looking for something. Tears streaking down your dust-covered face as you lift heavy pieces of debris, searching. You wake up, shouting, No! But your voice is drowned out by a deafening rumble from the skies above. The bedroom window is covered in water. It's pouring down from the clouds. You guess this must be rain, but you've never experienced that before. There's a bright flash from outside and another crack and rumble. Thunder! It must be a thunderstorm. No, not my top eight! Dan, put me back in the top eight! Oh, I'm not saying which one which one was it. Trombone. About Jesus being worth the effort. Uh, it's still the early hours of the morning. You've already almost forgotten your bad dream, but you're too unsettled to go back to sleep yet. The rain beats down on the roof of your quarters, joined now and then with great peals of thunder like the footsteps of an angry beast. 
Uh, none of those, really. I'd like to watch the rain. Can I go watch the rain? I guess I'm going to go to my parents. Ma'am, deed. Ma'am, indeed. Your dad is awake, too, watching the rain from a large porthole in the kitchenette. He gives you a hug, and you gaze out together. This is good, he says quietly. Means we'll have plenty of water for the crops. Pure, healthy water, just like on Earth. Everything's going to be okay, my little potato. You hug your dad tight and hope he's right. I like dad. Midwet. What's up, Tange? Have you gone outside the colony? You know, all sorts of terrible things. Not that it stops my brother. Okay. I don't have anything for you, I'm afraid. Need a break soon. I know. I know I need a break. I guess I'm going to go rest again. Just want to see if there's anybody worth talking to. Or a log that I could pick up, perhaps. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the log. I would like to find a bug. Is there any chance I might find a bug somewhere around here? Is there any bug friend? Because I learned that Tange likes bugs. I would just like to, I would like to offer that to her. Let's relax. Nothing much happens as much. You spend most of the time spacing out or whatever's on your hear speak. Uh, occasionally nodding hello to the other colonists passing through. You binge a few seasons of a show you've been meaning to rewatch. Took the month off. Do you want to forget discovering or writing an essay? Neither of those. I like both of them. Midwet. Late wet. All right, I'm happy. I'm clear minded. Got no worries. I've forgotten my dead friend. <laughs> it's a problem free philosophy. Forgotten my dead friend. Where is the depot? All I want is the depot. Nothing. All right, let's go learn. Let us learn the humanities. You learn the language you speak. Esperanto is a conlang, a constructed language. It was designed to be easy for foreign speakers, at least European ones, to learn in the hope that it would bring people together. The word Esperanto means one who hopes. Get to work. Well, I'm not going to get the max effects out of that one, no matter what I do. Super goal! Victorious. Yeah. The days have been getting shorter with only the yellow sun barely skimming the horizon. One morning you wake in the darkness and have to check your hollow palm to know what time it is. You see a hollow stream from Mars. Good morning to all my pals, if you can even call it morning. They've named it Glow Season because, like, everything is crazy glowing out there in the dark. I'm staying in the I'm staying the heck inside for the next month. What's the point in even going out if you can't see anything? It's going to be a long, boring month. No way it looks cool out there. You peek out the window. The wormhole is the biggest you've ever seen it, like a massive fiery ring in the sky. The planet must be very close to it now. And out in the jungle, something new is taking place. The plants are flowering, glowing, iridescent blooms, and everything is full of life. There are strange new sounds, long hooting calls, and gurgling roars. After Mars's message is a notice from the council, warning everyone to stay safely inside. Tammy's dad and the other surveyors have been called back, and the gates closed for the month. There's a tension in the air, as if everyone is waiting on something. Not me. I'm going to enjoy the glow. It looks so cool! I'm here for this. I just want to know where the depot is, though. I love the glow. Crystals. I found a glittering crystal cluster. My favorite thing. Tange, would you like it? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you, Tange, if I could find you. Guess you're not out. What's up, Dis? Where's your sis? Feels different. Don't know how. Just different. Dare you eat this worm? Bravery? I've not gotten any of that. Where's your sis, dude? All right, well, none of them have speech bubbles, so I'm going to just go. We got to learn. Learning never stops. You're studying the topic about justice has been mediated by various legal systems, culminating in a mock trial based off of a legal system of your own design. You're supposed to use your broad knowledge to design the best system, but only class can resist adding their own bizarre rules, like not being able to use certain words or having to beat your accuser in a foot race before you're allowed to defend yourself. It's good fun. Not exactly a shiny moment in the history of justice. Get to work. Uh, I gotta lose kudos for this one, huh? Just 
barely pulled it off, huh? Still working on that friendship with Tange. It's daytime when the emergency's up. Uh, what's up? Oh, no. It's daytime when the emergency sirens start up. Well, what passes for day? It's still nearly pitch black out, except for the eerie green twilight glow on the horizon. You look towards the gates. They're open. Wait. They shouldn't be open. The alert bla blares out of every speaker in the colony. It's the same one you used for hull breaches and fires. And in space, it meant you were supposed to go to the nearest emergency shaft and put on a spacesuit. On Bertumna, it means go to an assembly point and wait for instructions. The closest assembly point in the, is the children's creche, but from the opposite direction, you hear shouting and loud popping noises. Gunfire! Is the colony under attack? You find Dis in the creche and join him in hiding under the arts and crafts table. The lights are dim. You scared? He asks quietly. Uh, nods silently. I thought I would be, but I'm not, he says. I'm not scared of stuff like this. You can't help but glance at the holo projector on the wall, the one that electrocuted your classmate Tammy earlier this year. The glowing bear looms over a room and for a moment looks more like a monster than a toy. You grew up here. It feels weird to be hiding here like your little kids again. You hear more gunfire and yelling, but within half an hour, they play the all-clear tone. Chief Surveyor Tonin comes in and lets you know it's all safe now as the lights come back on. You glance at the hologram teddy bear again. Tonin was Tammy's dad. How can he be sure it's safe? How can he be sure anything is safe? Lunch is over. Bye, trombone. Have a great rest of your day. You're relieved when your parents arrive with an ashen-shaped, an ashen-faced cow. They won't talk about what happened at Geoponics. After two weeks of darkness with the blue sun... That was scary. I just got an achievement. Uh, with the blue sun barely skimming the horizon, it begins to move higher in the sky and daytime returns. The council admits they don't know how the gates are opened or how the creatures got in. Some of the attacking creatures were once thought to be docile. Others were species nobody had seen before. It was like something had driven them to assault the colony. At least nobody was killed this time. All right. Have we completed our first year? Childhood is fleeting. The game will end when you reach age 20, so you should focus on a few skills to improve and friends to spend time with. Use the skills and friends button at the top left of the screen to keep track of. Good luck. Well, I have been. I have friendship 18 with, with Tange. I've got a lot of things. Fascinating. <clears throat> New perk. Shop closed. Yay, Depot. How do I get there? Where is the depot? You keep using that word. I don't think you know what it means. It said there was new things available in the depot. Well, please tell me where the depot is. Don't just say new things are available and then not show me the things. Where is the depot? I don't understand. I don't understand. Am I not hitting a button? Is there a button I'm supposed to be hitting to get to the depot? Is there a person I'm supposed to be talking to? Where is the depot? Maybe there's like an FAQ. I don't really want a tutorial. I'm worried that's going to take me away from here. I guess we need to try. No. See, that's what I was worried about. Gallery? No. Ah! I'm going to Google it. What is it? I was a teenage exocolonist. I was a teenage exocolonist depot. How is that not here? All right, I'm going to hang on. Where is the depot? The Supply Depot shop unlocks after the second Vertumnalia. Okay. Okay. That's all you needed to tell me. That's all I needed to know this entire time. All right. 
Let's give her... Oh, no! I want to give her crystals. You again? Why do you keep pestering me? It's not as though you've done anything to impress me with your usefulness. What I mean is, we're not friends. We are literally 18 friendships. So I don't know what you're talking about, Tange, but you're literally breaking my heart. I have something for you. Would you like the crystal, the crystal cluster? I feel like I feel like you would like the crystal cluster. Please take it. Urgh! What? What do you want from me, Tange? What do you want from me? I just want to be friends. All I want is your friendship. Ooh, what's that? I get a card with this. It's nice to take some time off and chill from all the stress of school and work, not to mention the mental toll of just living on this unpredictable planet. Looks like you're the only, 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 only one. Some of the kids are also relaxing. Mars and Dis. I don't really care much about them, but sure. Okay, but you do stink. You hear Mars defend herself. It's not my fault that you can't tell. Maybe your nose stopped working, but the rest of us can smell it. And he smells awful, right, Selene? I'm not going to bully. Now stop being mean. You stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mars. She glares at you, then it does. Ugh, fine. I'm sorry, Dis. I'm just trying to help, but I should have said it in a nicer way. Not everyone is going to tell you the truth, you know. I do, we do not we do not condone bullying in this house. So much has happened in the last month since the monster attack during Glow. The idea of this planet as a peaceful utopia has been shattered. The security squads are training new members and keeping close watch on the gates now. They're reinforcing the walls and even installing a few robotic turrets. In class, you have drills on what to do if the colony is attacked again. In all the excitement, you forgot today was your birthday. Your parents haven't forgotten. They wake you up early with enthusiastic shouts of surprise! A Vertumnan year is only a little longer than a year on Earth, so you've taken up its calendars for birthdays. Yours is the second month of quiet. Spark snow drifts slowly past your porthole window as you snuggle with your dad. Your mom climbs up too and sits on the edge of your bed. Your dad pulls a bowl of fruit from behind his back with a flourish, like a magic tr trick. At least you think it's fruit. What are those? Baba fruit, your dad grins. The foragers have been picking these just outside the walls. They might look funny, but they're tasty. Try one. You take a cautious bite. The pulp is soft and tastes a bit like lemon, only more blue. I bet you can't wait to join the surveyors out there, your dad says wistfully. Who knows what else you'll find? Selene is not allowed outside the gates, your mom interrupts, her voice sharp. It's too dangerous for kids. Well, I know, but eventually, your mom, your dad says, but your mom cuts him off again. But not now, your mom replies. Not with the, not since the attack. Not with everything we know is out there now. Uh, you knew about the monsters, admit it. Your parents exchange a heavy look. The surveyors knew there was something dangerous out there we hadn't encountered yet. But we didn't know what attacked the colony. We thought if we closed the gates and stayed inside, it wouldn't see us as a threat. We didn't want to scare everyone, your dad adds. It was just a precaution. Even still, your mom says, it's clear that everyone should know how to defend themselves if it happens again. To be clear, this includes knowing when to run away, your dad adds. Chief, uh, Security Chief Red's offering self-defense lessons at the garrison, you know. Even for kids. If you're interested, you should drop in sometime. Your mom gives you a stern look, and I know your friend Dis has been sneaking outside the walls, she says grimly. If I catch you doing that, I'm going to put a chip in your ear. You laugh. What a good joke. Your mom doesn't laugh. Uh, what, me? Never. Yeah, you better never, your mom retorts, crossing her arms. Look at how creative I am. I'm so creative. I'm the most creative. So I should have been wandering around and picking up things the entire time. I'm learning that. Hello, Dis. Dis is sitting in the grass near the big gates that lead out to the jungle. He's just staring out into the nothingness and picking absentmindedly at the weeds. He pretends not to notice you as you approach. What's the with him? He shifts uncomfortably as you sit but doesn't say anything. You both just hang out, saying and doing nothing. You stare at the big gates. The grass in the colony is trimmed short by garden bots, but out there it's wild and as high as your waist. Head surveyor Tonin is prepping his equipment for an outing. He's bringing a lot. Maybe he's going to stay out overnight. You're starting to wonder if Dis will ever acknowledge you when he says, uh, I gotta go. And he starts down the, as he starts down the hill, he pauses and says, this is a good spot. I'll probably come back here tomorrow. Okay. Tange, please be my friend. You again? Stop this, Tange. Stop this. <laughs> Tange, you're about, me, you're about to make me start this whole game over, okay? And I'm gonna be nothing but smart. I'm gonna be nothing but intelligent for you. Okay, so I can do defense training. That doesn't help me at all with Tange. Should 
Should I start working on my logic? Am I doing too much in humanities? It'll take five days. You're bringing supplies to medbay when you see something unusual. Tangent curled up on a bench. Oh, Tange. Her head pillowed on a rolled up lab coat. She's fast asleep. You stop and stare. You never see Tange sleeping. She's always so busy. You're surprised she even has time to nap. You turn to leave her in peace when you bump into Anemone. What? Anemone says she hardly ever sleeps. Like just a couple hours a night. Is she sick or something? Uh, you look back at Tangent, snoozing peacefully. I'm so jealous of her genetic enhancement. And I mean, he says, rubbing at one of the scales, sprouting at her jawline. She hardly needs to sleep at all. She probably stayed up all night studying for this morning's history test. Shh, let's let her sleep. Tangent's hollow palm beeps a uh, soft alarm. She sits up and stretches, looking totally refreshed and alert. She sees you watching her and looks annoyed. Annoyed. Just a power nap, she says. No reason to gawk. Uh, as you get older, challenges can have conditions. The challenge suit, social, mental, or physical, determines what conditions can appear and which decks will work best. Try to collect social yellow cards if you want to win battles for social skills. Interessant. Interessant. Okay. Um, I don't really like that card. We do have three zeros in a row. So close! Win. And I got the kudos. That was the best option. I'm so persuasive. I'm so creative. Tang! Tang is standing still with her, or with her face held up to the sky, letting blue snowflakes land on her cheeks. They melt almost immediately. She doesn't move as you approach. After a minute, she winces and rubs her eyes. It stings, she says, because it's made of acid. Uh, acid snow? Tang nods. Professor Howell says it isn't harmful, but is an important part of the natural cycle here. It freezes at 12 degrees Celsius and turns into tiny crystals that are so heavy they fall from the clouds. You can see them under a microscope. She sticks her tongue, tongue, she sticks her tongue out and lets some of the flakes fall on it. It tastes kind of sour but sweet, she observes. Fascinating. Tange pulls out a sample jar from her coat. We know that what it's made of, but our understanding is incomplete, she says, and places the jar on an outcropping of rocks. The big mushrooms changed in shape and color before the snow began to fall. I wonder, is there some sort of signal that precedes the changing of the seasons? What happens if I expose samples collected in dust season to snow from quiet season? A small, excited smile creeps across Tangent's face. There's so much to learn about this planet. I can't wait. You and your brother are so much alike. She narrows her eyes. Yes, we used to get that a lot, she says. I guess it's still true. If you think sneaking out of the colony is the same as valid scientific research... She frowns at you. He's so dumb, she mutters, shoves her hands under her arms. He only cares about feelings, especially his own. So what are we feeling in the chat? How do we feel about this game? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? What are we doing? What are we feeling? How are we feeling about it? As for me, I'm a big fan. I'm really enjoying myself. Um, it makes me really want to like consider what other options there are that I could have made, like what other decisions I could have made along the way. Um, I'm wanting to like min max the relationships and things like that. Like obviously I am min maxing the, the humanity stuff, but there's even more that I could min max, right? It's impossible to partner with either Tan or Mars for group work this month. Every time you try to get one of them to be the partner, they've already stuck to each other like glue. Lurk, why check out Pentiment? Dude, I'm so excited about that game. I want to play it so bad. It's on my list. Let me know. It's a 10 out of 10 on IGN. That's very exciting. Can't imagine they'd be friends, but the evidence is right before your eyes. Get to work. Plus five kudos if total equals goal. <gasps> well, now I really want to make that happen. Can a straight be in reverse? No. Hmm. Unchangeable. Unbreakable. Unstoppable. And that's what you are. No, too much. I need I need less. I need one less. Uh, let's see. No, that's too many less. Yeah, I did it. Plus five kudos. Win. 
<laughs> Look at all the kudos. So many kudos. I'm a kudos king. I'm kingdos. Kingdos of the kudos kudos. You ready to talk to him? It's definitely picking up pace as I am um, learning how to play and learning who to talk to when, when not to talk to people. You meet your dad adjusting a watering bot in your mom's flower garden. He's having a sneezing fit. His eyes runny and red. You're alarmed. You've never seen him look sick before. People were hardly ever ill in the stratospheric, except maybe it's when the zero-G rooms made them queasy. Not to worry, my little beanstalk, he says nasally. I'll be fine. It's just this pollen making my head a little stuffy. He wipes his nose with a handkerchief and looks around. Everywhere you turn, the air is soupy and tingled, tinged with pink from all the floating pollen. On Earth, your dad tells you, we used to call this hay fever. Even though it had nothing to do with hay, your mom cuts in, carrying a large bouquet of flowers. The native flowers seem to be in full bloom this time of year. She buries her nose deep in them, and they smell fantastic. Your dad smiles kindly and agrees that they sure are beautiful. Then he blows his nose loudly. Sniff the flowers. They do smell good, and they look harmless. Your dad's eyes look so sad, but maybe that's just the allergies. Hey, Selene, I know the last few weeks have been very hard for you. This might be a good time to relax and stick around in the hoarder's wing. Is that a hint? Is that a hint? Is there something special about the quarters that I need to be doing right now? Hey, Tange. Hey, girl. Can I help you? Would you like this bobber fruit or some medicinal root? I'm going to give you some bobber fruit. There you go. Probably keep it. Rats. It's worth a shot. Okay. Humanities. You guys know what it is. You spend a few weeks reading uh, old classic novels from Earth, and you learn a lot of words, and you soon discover the adults do not want you saying in casual conversation. Professor Howe says you should take the novels in context of the time they were written, but it's hard to overlook some of the stereotypes people used to believe. Get to work. All right. Five kudos. So that just stays, huh? Okay. I'm going to keep doing it. Um, let's go for... One... Two, three, two, five. Too much. Nope. 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 Oh, wait, hang on. Was that 15? Ah, so close. Oh, well, there you go. That worked perfect. Uh, let's see. Which one should we add it to? Yes. Give me the kudos. Thank you for the kudos. Early pollen, mid pollen. Let's go see if there's anything to collect. I wish I'd known that I was supposed to be looking for things this whole time. Okay, nobody to talk to, nothing to do. Push forward, onward and upward. It's impossible, same thing as earlier. Plus five it reaches the goal. Let's go in a logical order. No! Hmm. That is no good. Hmm. Too much. Not enough. Nice. Victorious. Ha 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 Look at all those kudos. 
Yes, the kudos king reigneth. You're finishing breakfast in the common area when Marzipan struts in. Look at you eating cereal, she says, turning her nose up at you. I'll bet you don't even know what today is. Uh, your birthday? No, you dummy. My birthday is the first month of wet season. You better remember that. Okay. Today is St. Valentine's Day. Dis and Cal wander over to hear more. Back on Earth, Mars explains, it was a day when everybody had to give their best friend a gift, especially sweets. And then you put the sweets under your pillow, and it makes you dream about who you're going to marry. And there are decorations of hearts and arrows and pigs. Pigs? We don't even have pigs here. Before Mars can answer, Dis snorts, this is dumb. Marsband just made it up to get free candy. He rolls his eyes and walks away. As he leaves, Mars shouts at his back, Well, nobody was going to pick you anyway. You stink. I, th I know who my best friend will be. Oh, really? Who could it be? She asks playfully. I'm going to tell all the other kids about it, Mars says. Go, uh, so you go around and find your best friend and give them a gift. Make sure you do it by the end of the day or it doesn't count. And if too many people want to be my best friend, I'll hold tryouts for the position. It's only fair. She tosses her hair over her shoulder and laughs. Tange. <laughs> oh, Tange, I need to give you a gift. Can I have some candy, though? I would much rather give her some candy. Or do they just stock me up with some candy to give? I mean, she's obviously, she's the one. Tange. Uh, is waving her hands vigorously in the air. She's playing a study game on her palm where you have to match failing numbers into correct equations. She barely notices you. Oh, man. Dude, I'm down bad for somebody that's not nice to me. <laughs> hey, want to be, hey, be best friends? Tange pauses the game and her eyes focus on you. Uh, I think your concept is shylist, and if I had did have to pick a best friend, I'd want someone I could study with. Someone who cares more about learning. Sorry. I love learning! And she goes back to her game. She doesn't look sorry. Tange! Tinge! <laughs> Come on! Why? Why? We talk every day. We talk every day. I don't even want a friend if you're not the one. All right, then I'm gonna be best friends with little brother. Oh, Tinge. He likes empathy. I don't even have that high of empathy. So who am I supposed to be friends with? She wants. She's gonna want me to be sporty. Or maybe not. He likes he likes empathy and stuff, right? No. Those are the only options. Tange! You're killing me, Tange. Alright, I guess let's I guess let's be best friends with Anemone. Okay, best friend, tag, you're it! I don't like this game. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. I don't like this game anymore. Oh man. Alright, another another of those. Uh let's see. I need 16. That's a lot. Too much. Oh no, wait, what? What was that? Oh, wait, that was it. Yeah, win. Nice. I am so good at this. If only Tange could see the potential in having someone that is the yin to her yang. I'm smart in a different way, Tange. I'm smart differently. Love me. Why, Tange? Why? Why do you got to do me like this? What's up, Mars? Mars is in a huff. Ah, oh, because you didn't pick her for Valentine's Day? Uh-oh. Nobody picked her. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> Mars. Why is Anemone so popular all of a sudden? She doesn't even try. All she thinks about is sports ball. Whatever. I'm just too mature for kids my age. The older kids get me, even if you don't. I'm so sorry, Mars. 
Ah, that's brutal, friend. I didn't I didn't want that for you. I just wanted tange. If it makes you feel any better, if it makes you feel any better, I was also rejected, Mars. This month you're supposed to learn different styles of dance. Mars takes to it fairly easily, but Tange objectively refuses to. Saying she'd rather be penalized for non-cooperation than make a fool of herself. She sits the whole month out doing independent study on the philosophy of medicine. No matter how much Mars cajoles, bribes, or begs Tange to dance with her, she doesn't budge. Get to work. Tange! Why are you doing this to me, Tange? Why you gotta be this way? Oh, wait, here we go. This is what I'll do. Two, one, 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 two. For real? All right, well, I did it, but I'm not proud of it. Win. Oh, of the kudos. You've never seen as much kudos as I have collected. Look at my kudos. It's time once more for Vertum Nalia. The mood of the colony has been muted this year ever since the attack during Glow, though everything is still cheerfully decorated and the feast table is still heavy with food, mostly soy rations. This Vertum Nalia just feels different in a way you can't describe. The colonists gather in the square for Governor Uticott's speech. What a year Vertum has given us, the governor begins in her weedy voice. I stand before you so proud of everything the colony has accomplished in such a short time. I have always hoped that we could bring with us the best facets of humanity, cooperation, resilience, and creativity, and the events of this year have given me no reason to doubt my convictions. These creatures were unexpected, but I urge everyone to consider what it means for life here. If Vatumna can sustain megafauna, then that means conditions are good for us as well. Our friends at Geoponics are already working on the logistics of domesticating the wildlife. Your dad, as second cultivator, stands and gives a sheepish wave to the crowd. There's a smattering of applause. <laughs> Mars elbows you. Hey, she whispers. Did you hear? My dad's say Uticot's going to announce the depot's open to the public. You know, shopping, somewhere to spend all the kudos we've been saving up. There's going to be candy and toys and makeup and nice smelling soap, not the boring kind in the communal showers. You know the concept of shopping. They do it in the hollow vids from Earth, especially the ones Mars likes, but you've never actually done it. The colony provides everything you need, but it would be nice to buy yourself a treat. My dad's giving me an allowance, Mars says, shooting you a look of pity. It's too bad your parents make you work for yours. You and Mars tune back into the speeches just as Uticott, as predicted, announced the opening of the general store at the depot. Mars gives you a knowing look as she claps. Uticott gestures for the council members to stand. Finally, the council remains unchanged from last year. We are, as always, proud to serve you and the colony as your government. The music starts up as Governor Uticott uh, finishes. Thank you all for your hard work and your perseverance this year, she says over the ruckus. Together we build the future. Um, I'm going to be doing the talent show again. Which is, of course, going to get me friends with these two. Dez and Mars are your competitors for the talent show. Mars is a shoe-in for winning with her jazzy high-energy dance routine, so her all eyes are on Dez for daring to compete against her. Dez stands on stage, clears his throat, then gestures with his arm. From his hollow palm emerges a projection of a ventriloquist dummy. He sits on his lap and launches into a comedy routine, speaking through the doll with zero filter. The judge is all howl at his impression of Chief Engineer Instant, but the crowd favored by far as Administrator seeks thin, self-important voice coming out of the doll, imperiously demanding that not everyone can have perfect scores, that they have to be rationed appropriately. Dis looks flustered by all the attention, but proud as well. He bobs in a little bow before leaving the stage to raucous applause. It's hard, hard. It's a tough act to follow. What do you do? Magic. Okay. We're doing it this time, dudes. Oh, it's locked in? Fascinating. Uh, random card locked in one slot, sure enough. All right. Goal of 59. Let's do the best we can. Let's do this. Okay, 13 plus 1 in the first round. That's pretty good. Oh, I didn't get the plus 1 after all. That's not nice. Um, let's see. Let's go with one, zero. Oopsie. Zero. Okay, that'll give us 11. That'll give us 11. 11. Ten. Ten. Eleven. So it looks like 11 is the best I can do. Yeah, 
Yikes, I'm not gonna be able to do it again. Ah, why? I mean, nowhere close. I'm nowhere close. Bummer! I can't win these challenges! What is the point? What is the point of this plethora of creativity? Dis wins by overwhelming applause. Dis just shrugs and smiles awkwardly. He didn't mean to win, so he's uncomfortable with the attention. Mars, on the other hand, is livid. I worked on my routine for months, she cries, and refuses to shake his hand. Don't even mention yours. It was so embarrassing, you immediately want to forget it happened. I don't understand why I can't win that. That's a little frustrating. After the festivities are over, everyone takes time off for a much-needed break. Mars organizes a water fight that takes over the whole colony, even the adults. It brightens everyone's spirit, even in the thick heat of the dust. Uh, relax on the walls in the garrison. You end up on top of the Western Wall with Dis, launching water-filled poof shrooms down on the unsuspecting anemone in the sports ball court below. The walls seem like a neat place to hang out and relax, much quieter than the lounge if you're looking for some solitude. Okay. Man, I'm just so disappointed in Tange. Yeah, I already want to play this game again. Which is a good place to be. Okay, Depot. Um, we got a superhero cape, a memory backpack. What is that? Emoji Proji. Um, a hundred kudos? I thought I was doing so good with my 34. Are you for real? <laughs> Yo. Yo, I thought I was doing good. I can't even compare to this amount of kudos. You earn them one at a time. I'm only earning five because of the particular thing that I'm doing. There's only 130 days. What do you mean 200? There must be another way to get kudos. Because that's wild sauce. That simply can't be true. Professor Hal has you write poems about the beauty of the sunset on Vertumna. The sun goes down beneath the clouds beyond the fields and roboplows. You spend the better part of an hour trying to find a good word for geoponics. Card becomes two. Ah, so we no longer even have the plus five kudos. How on earth am I supposed to get to like 300 kudos? That's insane. I mean, am I wrong? I feel like I'm not wrong. Okay, I didn't get a kudos there. Tange, we are literally best friends and I'm tired of you acting like we're not. Ooh. Persuasion level one plus one to social cards. Yellow cards get plus one. That's so fun. I've always gotten the next creativity perk. Because I'm an excessively creative person, and nobody respects that in this colony. No one in this colony sees me for who I really am. And who I really am is a creative. It's just like real life. More humanities. This month you're supposed to pick a play from a famous playwright and do a dramatic reading for the class. You pick Ivam Indrajit, an existential play about a writer who struggles due to not having a clear sense of self and being unable to find meaning in his life. He's unhappy with the restrictive roles placed on him by society, but also paralyzed by the pointlessness and absurdity of the light cycle of life and death. You're not sure why, but something in it speaks to you. Yes! Look at all those plus ones. Plus one to social yellow cards. One slot will turn cards. Wow, I can have a straight? Yes, please give me the straight. Yeah, boy. Look at that. Look at that. Nice, dude. Nice, dude. We love to see it.
Yes. I'll take that 27. No way it's not the most kudos. You're losing it. You're positively losing it. Folks, we're probably going to wrap it up here in the next couple minutes, but I think my, my final sense on this game is, is that I'm very excited to play more. And that's a good sign. Um, I get the social impact aspect of it. It's definitely like questioning colonialism. It's questioning capitalism, um, putting an interesting spin on those things. And I think that's good. I think that's important work to be done. Um, it's definitely as important of a game as Citizen Sleeper so far, as far as the things that it's like asking you to question. Uh, I need to get 18, huh? Ah, oh, goal is 18. Does it have to be? So close. Oh, we're so close. Ah, how can we be so close? Every feasible option is so stinking close, but not quite there. Come on. Is it possible? And I feel like I'm trying everything. Well, I guess I'll just win and won't worry about the kudos. The best possible option was this one. At least I win. Wasn't the most possible? That's crazy. Um, but yeah, this game makes me want to play more of it, and I think that's a win. I think that's a, I think that's a successful game. Uh, so far, I think that the most, the best part about it was the absolute shock of Tammy dying out of nowhere. That was something that was really, really surprising. Uh, but other than that, I think it's been uh, a really good reading experience. I'm sure it would go even quicker if you're allowed to play it within whatever time frame you're working in. It'd be more fun to play probably without a stream going on uh, without worrying about having to do it. I hope that I presented it in a way that you guys appreciated and enjoyed. I hope that I was entertaining enough, but I'm sure that there is it would be even more improved um, by just playing it by yourself and being able to experience it there. Uh, okay, so we need somebody to raid. We're going to go raid somebody. We're going to go uh, hang out with someone. Folks, we are really a church. I am really a pastor. And really uh, let's see who is live. I have Asia the Girl, Jake Live. I have Chow Fan, Eagle Garrett. Um, yep, so we got a couple options there. I think Trombone is gone, so it looks like Jade is playing an indie game. Let's see what Jade's playing. Hey. Um, but yes, we believe three things we drew about every single one of you out there. Uh, regardless of whether or not you believe in God, don't believe in God, go to church, don't go to church. None of those things change these three things that we believe to be true about all of you. Number one, that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, we love you. We want community with you. That's what we're doing here on Twitch, Discord, and YouTube. And number three, believe that you, yes, you matter. You're a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it. We're going to see what Jade's doing. Jade is playing some kind of Fox game. Jade's playing a Fox game. Asia is doing work and chill. Chow Fan is doing Minecraft. Uh, let's, we'll do Jade. We'll raid Jade. We raided him yesterday, we'll raid him again today. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and raid Jade and I will catch you guys over there. Go spam a bunch of you matters in the chat. I'll go ahead and get a bunch in there right now. Um, I'm probably gonna go eat lunch here before too long, but 
We'll go hang out with Jate, hang out with him for a bit, and uh, let me know what you thought of the game. I enjoyed it so far. I'd give it a 7 out of 10, maybe an 8 out of 10. Uh, depending on that emotional upheaval of the character dying at the very beginning, that was really good. So we'll see. I'll play more of it, and I'll let you guys know. If you want to see more of it, it'll go on the Variety Tuesdays option board, so you could potentially see more of it next Tuesday if you'd like that. Uh, okay, with that, and until the next time I see you, bye-bye!